Well, we're going to be a little bit late kicking off here. The team's not out of the tunnel as yet. It's BBC Five Live Sports Extra. Let's run you through the teams very quickly before they make their way out. Manchester United look like this. Anders Lindegaard, the Dane, is in goal. The back four from right to left. De Silva, Evans, Ferdinand and Evra. Two holding midfield players, Scholes and Fletcher. Well back on the left, Young on the right with Van Persie and Rooney playing up front. And that's sort of the team we expected, bar a couple, isn't it? As uh, Rube Van Mr. Roy takes his seat next to us. Gary Neville goes over to shake his hands. Edwin van der Zaar is there as well. And here come the teams at Old Trafford. They make their way out of the corner. A huge contrast in the build-up to this game on the same day as a statue of Sir Alex Ferguson was unveiled behind the stand to my right-hand side. Mark Hughes, another United legend, sacked as manager of Queen's Park Rangers. United in their traditional red shirts, white shorts and black socks and the hoops of Queen's Park Rangers, blue and white, blue shorts and White Sox as they line up in front of the Barclays Premier League sign the get on with the game banner in front of them small band of Queen's Park Rangers fans in the corner away to my right hand side last week they displayed a banner which said Harry come and save us or well, the board of Reddit digested it and made an appointment it should be interesting today Kevin shouldn't it that'll be very interesting because you're first and foremost you look at the side that was picked you look at how they react because basically the side that's picked today, if they do well, they're the first ones in, in Harry Redknapp's eyes. So it'll be very, very interesting. Rio Ferdinand wearing the captain's armband, trots away to the Stretford end, applauding above his head. His brother Anton dropped from the team onto the bench today, along with Esteban Granero. He's dropped from the Real Madrid man. Junior Hoylet, he's been dropped as well. Samba Diakite several of those players Kevin that were signed in the summer by Hughes that obviously the backroom team think perhaps haven't been pulling their weight well you know it's obvious because when you're not winning games you know it's hard but when, you, when you're trying to get a settled side when you bring so many players in as Mark Hughes has done it's very very difficult you know they don't always blend right away but what, it, what it's done is probably upset one or two players push their noses out of joint because what he's basically told the players that he's not selected is, I don't think you're going to be good enough for the Barclays Premier League. So, I'm getting my players in, they're going to do the business, and unfortunately it didn't work for them. Yeah, it sounds like there's been a divide, doesn't there, between old guard and new guard. And do you find that when, you, when you're at a football club, when new players come in, that sometimes it can divide a dressing room? Oh, it can divide it. You know, and it, it takes a, a little bit of a while to, to work, especially if, you, if you've been used to playing regularly. And all of a sudden, the, the new players have been brought in, you've basically been told that you're not good enough for this new manager's side. You kind of feel pushed out a little bit, so there is going to be a little bit of a stirring in the dressing room, but when you bring in, I think it was something like 12 or 13 players, then there's a lot of noses pushed out of joint, mm. there will be a lot of splits in the dressing room, and it would have been interesting how hard the, the, the backroom staff would have had to work to get it all together. Julio Cesar in goal today for Queen's Park Rangers, Triore at right back with Mbia and Nelson centre-halves, Hill at left back, Derry and Forlan holding midfield, Tarapt ahead of them, then Cisse up front and wide will be Mackey and Kieran Dyer as away we go at Old Trafford as Manchester United kick from left to right as we look at it. And QPR attacking the Stretford end and immediately it's Manchester United in possession 10 yards inside their own half with Rio Ferdinand. This is BBC Five Live Sports Extra with John Akers and Kevin Gallagher. A little later we'll be crossing to Formula One qualifying from Brazil which sounds like it's going to be a very very exciting Grand Prix with the rain forecast and uh, this game will continue with John Murray and Kevin on five live Ferdinand in possession just bringing the ball towards the halfway line then stroking it into the feet of Rooney first touch for him tries to lay in well back who's sprinting down the left he's being forced away from goal but does have possession Knocks it back to Evra. He's got three to aim for in the middle, but finds Welbeck short. Nice feet from Welbeck. Thinks about a shot, 30 yards out, but Toe pokes it to Fletcher. Now Welbeck again. Nice one-touch passing from Manchester United, but it's been broken up by Queen's Park Rangers, and Cissé is in possession with his Mr T haircut. Out on the left-hand side, it's with Tarat, wearing gloves, drifts forward, beats a couple of players. Really good run, this. And then a typical Paul Scholes challenge late 
hacks down his man, and it's a free kick to QPR, which they've taken quickly. And they've got possession on the left, but that's an overhit pass to wrap from sublime to ridiculous. He just beats four players and then knocks a 10-yard pass out of play. Yeah, it's, you know, he does everything right, but to me, I mean, he gets himself into a great area. They're defending very, very deep. They catch him on the counter-attack, Queen's Park Rangers. They get forward quickly with Parat. But then what he does is at the halfway line he dribbles past three players but he goes in the way to where all the trouble is. Instead of coming wider he gets a 2v1. He goes in on top of the trouble, on top of the danger and it ends up Paul Scholes typically. He says, well, you're not <laughs> going past me. Kicks him on the knee, brings him down. We've been watching Paul Scholes do that for 20 years now. He doesn't get any better at it. I wouldn't let him tackle, I don't think. <laughs> i just say, Paul, you just stick to having the best first touch and second touch in the game at shifting the play and changing direction. Yeah, it's, it's amazing, you know, as you get older and, and how he's developed. I mean, I think the biggest surprise to everybody is when he retired, he went out the game for almost, what, 10 months, nearly a year, and then comes back, and, and he was one of Manchester United's yep. better players. Well, they looked a different side with him in it. As Welbeck passes the ball out of play, there's a throw-in for QPR and a foul, and they have a free kick 10 yards inside their own half. It's nil-nil. We've had two and a half minutes at Old Trafford between Manchester United and Queen's Park Rangers. QPR failed to win any of their ten previous Premier League fixtures with Manchester United, drawn two and lost eight. And it's aimed forward by the goalkeeper Julio Cesar, who's all in yellow, free kick, foul on Ferdinand, taken quickly in the centre circle. Scholes gets the ball with his right, spins and plays the ball to the left to Welbeck, who knocks it back inside to Scholes, keeping possession with Rio Ferdinand, who jogs to the halfway line with the ball strokes it into the feet of Rooney who characteristically has come deep to get possession Fletcher into the feet of Van Persie for his first touch and now Queen's Park Rangers have got possession it's a very very good piece of play and they've got a few men over here and Cissé's picked it up tries to play a first time ball in towards Kieran Dyer, but it's blocked off Cissé gets possession back though and now they have it in central midfield with Derry Good play from Queen's Park Rangers. Well, it's very, very patient. Even though they're defending deeper, they're defending midway in their own half. They're letting it, they're keeping it very, very condensed. It's hard for Manchester United to get into the gaps. As the long ball forward searches out Mackey, who has got pace to burn, but the goalkeeper Lindergaard gets there first, and Manchester United are in possession. Yeah, they're going to be key as a, as a wider player. You know, Mackey on one side, you've got Kieran Dyer on the other, and Tarrat. These three players are key for Queen's Park Rangers on the counter-attack because everybody else defensive-minded as soon as they get it they've all gone into positions at the minute it's the link-up play uh, between Parat and Mackey out on the right-hand side that's been causing Manchester United problems well United decide to go forward quickly this time and a diagonal to Welbeck is kept in play he's gone back and it's with Fletcher into the feet of Welbeck midway inside the QPR half back to goal there's a hush around Old Trafford. It's the Queen's Park Rangers fans you can hear to my right at the moment. Scholes, wearing number 22. Checks, goes inside to Fletcher. Patient stuff this from Manchester United. They're on the lip of the centre circle now with Johnny Evans, who passed the late fitness test. Evra. Now for Ferdinand. Just three or four yards inside the QPR half. They're in two banks of four in straight lines and they look to be working a little harder than they perhaps did last week against Southampton. But now it's with Ashley Young, level with the penalty area. Drifts inside, Evers on the overlap, three in the middle. In comes the cross, headed away by Clint Hill. Derry brings it down and then hacks it away right-footed, aiming out, searching out Mackey. And he's been strong on the halfway line and he's going to surge forward over halfway. But Scholes breaks up the play and finds Ferdinand. Oh, well, that's good play. You know, it's when Darren Fletcher gets done a little bit out muscle by his fellow international player Jamie Mackey but Paul Scholes doing a covering job and he's, he's he's double central midfielder helping him out a little bit that's what he's there for Mr Silva tries to find Ashley Young who'd switched to the right for a moment but possession is with Tarrapt and again he evades three, four, five challenges he shouldn't really be doing it there though and Manchester United almost get possession back but they've had a bit of luck here Queen's Park Rangers and it's on the right hand side with uh, Forlan in central midfield now left footed, clips the ball forward searching out Mackey and Ferdinand slips and here's Jamie Mackey but Ferdinand just got to his feet again and Queen's Park Rangers have a corner and it's double teapot for Rio Ferdinand he's made a mistake there but it could have been a lot lot worse corner for QPR the first of the game well it's just lacks of concentration because he hasn't had to do much Rio Ferdinand he's just 
he saunters onto the ball very slowly. He knows he's got it all under control, but he's looking at the goalkeeper. He's just ready to roll it back. Unfortunately, his feet just give way. He slips on the turf, has a look at the turf. There's nothing there because it looks absolutely beautiful out there. Triore's forward, Derry and Hill is up from the back as well, along with Stefan and Beer. It's going to be a right-footed in-swinger from the left-hand side from Tarapt. He's duffed it, though, to the near post. So frustrating for Queen's Park Rangers supporters because you wonder how many corners and set-pieces they'll get to try and threaten Manchester United. When you come here, you don't get that many, and that was wasted. Yeah, you've got to take them. Set any set-pieces you can get, you must take them against the sides like Manchester United, all the top sides, because you know when you're playing a defensive system, that you only get maybe half a dozen maximum in a chance uh, in a game so you've got to take those chances well, Blackburn Rovers striker Kevin Gallagher on five live sports extras United are in possession on the halfway line chip ball down the right towards Rafael de Silva but it's been headed away by Forlan in fact it was Traore and Scholes is in possession in the centre circle for Manchester United. Now Evans out to the left-hand side to Evra, but he's been challenged, and QPR move forward over the halfway line. They've got a couple forward here. Still going through the middle here. It's a, a really good run, and QPR still in possession, this time with Cissé. Tries to slide in Mackie. The flag has stayed down, but Ferdinand is across. Spots the danger well. Read that situation well, Rio Ferdinand, and that's with Paul Scholes and Rafael de Silva and United will build again. Well, just Paul Scholes just showing a masterclass and, and how to have the switch of play when you're under pressure. You know, it's they're defending very, very deep at Manchester United at the minute. Queen's Park Rangers pressing them, but 20 yards out, he's getting pressed, just changes feet and just knocks it to the side. And it's an education for, for any of the young listeners it's to watch people like Paul Scholes. Clint Hill comes across and plants the ball out of play with his right foot. And it's a throw-in for Manchester United. Midway inside the QPR half, on the left-hand side, in front of the Sir Alex Ferguson stand. The statue unveiled yesterday, and there's a host of star names about 20 feet to our right who were here for the unveiling of that statue. It's a brilliant statue. I went to have a look at it before I came in, Kevin. It's fantastic, really imposing statue in front of the stand, high up on a plinth. It's a, it's a pretty big statue, a lot of bronze in there. Has he got a teacup next to it? It hasn't, no. There's, no. A, there's a hairdryer in his hand. A hairdryer. Yeah. There isn't really, for those of you uh, just tuning in. It's a poor ball aimed forward by United. It's gone out for a goal kick to Queen's Park Rangers. Yet to trouble Julio Cesar in the Queen's Park Rangers goal, Manchester United. Lion's share of possession. Queen's Park Rangers have looked half decent on the break. But uh, certainly not the route that some suggested it would be so far here Manchester United in possession with Van Persie he tries to lay in Young down the right, Clint Hill comes across Tarak keeps it in but it's only gone as far as Van Persie who goes forward with the ball, he's on his left foot, breaks a couple of challenges, there's a toe in there but Lee Probert doesn't want anything of it the referee, Jamie Mackey will break for Queen's Park Rangers over halfway, tries to lay in Gibril Cissé but across comes Patrice Evra and that's with Paul Scholes who uh, will just a little drag back there from Scholes and away from Mackey, but when they break, Manchester United are committing men forward, so there are gaps in behind when QPR break. Well, they are, but what Manchester United are doing well, they get the pace come back the way, so they, they end up delaying Queen's Park Rangers to allow people like Paul Scholes and Darren Fletcher to get back and help them out, you know, because what Manchester United have to do is they have to get Raphael and Patrice Evra forward a little bit more, but everybody's back for Queen's Park Rangers, just at times, Rio Ferdinand and Johnny Evans are actually at the centre circle, 10 yards inside Queen's Park Rangers half. That's how much and how far forward they're actually going against them. And that's exactly where Rio Ferdinand was when he played that ball forward. QPR intercepted, and then there's a foul. And Manchester United have conceded a free kick, and it's Paul Scholes again. Yeah, it's, his, it's infamous scissor <laughs> tackle. You miss him with one leg, you catch him with the other one. And Lee Probert at the moment is keeping his... Uh, his cards in his pocket, seven games this season, 33 yellows and three reds for Lee Probert, so he's not afraid to pull the cards out of his pocket. Free kick taken by Julio Cesar, the Brazilian goalkeeper, headed away by Ferdinand, nodded back into a dangerous area by Forlan. Queen's Park Rangers have possession with Kieran Dyer, making his first start since the first game of last season. It's been that long since he started a Premier League match for Queen's Park Rangers, and he's in possession. 
ball switched to the left-hand side. Really good ball to Tarapt and good defending from Rafael de Silva, who is quick and gets a crucial toe in. And it's a throw into Queen's Park Rangers midway inside their own, the uh, Manchester United half on the left-hand side. Five live sports extra, nil-nil. 12 minutes of the first half gone. Challenge from Forlan. Broken here to Tarap. Skips past Fletcher. Tries to lay in Mackey, but Ferdinand is there. And De Silva will play it away for Manchester United. Yeah, I'm quite impressed with the way Queen's Park Rangers have started the game. You know, they, they compress it very deep. But Jamie Mackey, who I initially thought was going to start on, on the right-hand side with Tarat uh, in behind Cece, hasn't. Tarat started on the left. Mackey started in behind Cece. And it's Mackey's pace... It's causing the problems because it's any time they get the ball, Tarat comes off the left, he gets into a gap, he gets in possession of the ball, and then it's Mackey's pace takes him one way, CC then comes and collects it. So it's, it's something that Manchester United have to think about defensively because the pace that they're, they're attempting to do on the counter attack is all down the middle. Well, Harry Redknapp will be encouraged so far, I think, by this performance from Queen's Park Rangers. Manchester United look the most threatening but haven't threatened. Evans rolls it into the feet of Rooney and then runs past him. It's a, a little insight into what Kevin was saying a few moments ago. Ball chipped forward looking for Ashley Young. It's overhit though by Darren Fletcher, who's going to take a little while to get back into it, isn't he, after his illness? Yeah, he's been a while out and people forget that, you know, but I must admit, I think Manchester United missed him in a lot of important games for them. You know, he was a key player for them. You know, and a lot of people say he was just that kind of hod carrier really in there, just done all the work, but... You know, Manchester United needed players like that. Uh, he's a grafter. I and mean, when you work hard, that allows people like Paul Scholes, Ryan Giggs, when they're in those positions, the ageing legs, shall we say, he's got that engine that can help them. Sir Alex Ferguson, a close-up on him in the bench in front of us. And uh, he's wearing what he's wearing in the, uh, the statue, which is a, a zipper all the way up and a, a big overcoat today. Paul Scholes nips in, takes the ball away from Cissé, then goes to ground. There might have been a foul, but the referee lets play go on. And Fletcher brings the ball forward. Five yards inside his own half for Manchester United. Nil-nil. Now he looks up, thinks about a pass. Rooney is short. Raphael is wide. Welbeck on the left-hand side, but he's gone back to Paul Scholes. QPR are working very, very hard to close down options. Forward goes Fletcher. Has to go square to Young and then intercepted by Derry. Now Raphael maybe with some space to try and get across him, but it's blocked. And QPR should clear here through Forlan. Ricochets off Van Persie. Goal kick for Queen's Park Rangers, who are doing their jobs at the moment. Well, they certainly are. Very well defensively. You know, it's, it's making it very tough for Manchester United. And the thing I'm impressed with is Tarat as well, because he is working back. And we know Raphael likes to get forward, likes to be you know, I mean, bombarding down the right-hand side as a full-back. But Tarat's doing his job. He's getting back in there. Sometimes maybe a little bit too deep. He ends up in a back five which sometimes when you do that as a kind of an attacking midfielder, if you do kind of fall asleep and you're not up to, to speed with the back four, you get caught out. Well, Sean Derry in the midfield pretty much cost them here last season. He was sent off and Manchester United won 2-0. They won 2-0 at Loftus Road as well last season. And he's in the team for his first start this afternoon. So he'll have that in his memory, I'm sure of it, this afternoon. Sean Derry, 34 now. Did the rounds in the lower league, signed by Neil Warnock from Crystal Palace. And you know what you're going to get from him. As Manchester United are in possession with Everett, 10 yards inside the Queen's Park Rangers half. Now it's Paul Scholes. Squares the ball to Ferdinand. 10 yards inside the QPR half, is closed down. Van Persie, that's a lovely touch around the corner to De Silva. Two in the middle, waiting for a cross. It finds Van Persie in the penalty area. Shots blocked, now Scholes, saved by the goalkeeper. Scholes feels he was fouled. The goalkeeper, Cesar, got hold of it in the end. He didn't manage to get enough purchase on it, Scholes, and the danger passes for Queen's Park Rangers. But that's United's best chance of the game so far. Well, it's the first time they've actually got in between the Queen's Park Rangers players. And Paul Scholes, who's been sitting very, very deep, more a holding midfielder, he actually breaks what he's been... I mean, he's made a career out of it, making yeah. that late, late run. And just as about to pull the trigger, you feel like he gets bundled over, but... You know, I just think it's good defending from Queen's Park Rangers. And who was there? It was Sean Derry to break it up. And I think he did get the ball, Sean Derry. It was a challenge from behind. He needed to make the challenge, but he did win enough of the ball. Nick Scholes felt he was fouled as he went to pull the trigger. Six yards out. 
I think the referee got that one right. Now here's Patrice Evra squaring the ball to Van Persie. Lovely touch from Van Persie, goes to pull the trigger and Forland slides in. The Argentinian makes the challenge and it was a timely one, Kevin. Well, we've just seen one from Sean Derry. Now we're seeing it from his midfield partner in Forland. You know, I mean, it's a great tackle, Van Persie again. When the right leg winds up to get the shot in and it just gives you enough time as a defender to get that foot in and, and take it away. But, you know, Manchester United now are just warming up the getting into the 20-yard area, but they've not had a shot at goal yet. I think now it's time to, to actually test out Julio Cesar. Well, the rain falling now at Old Trafford, lit up by the floodlights. It's uh, forecast to be pretty bad weather later on all across the country. Plenty of the country have got that bad weather at the moment. It's, uh, it's forecast for here in Manchester as well. As Skulls on the lip of the centre circle, strokes the ball out to the right to Young. Beautiful pass. Young brings it down. He's challenged. And United have to throw level with the penalty area of Queen's Park Rangers on the right-hand side. Nil-nil. 17 minutes of the game gone. Five live sports extra. John Akers, Kevin Gallagher. Evra, midway inside the QPR half. Centre field, jogging forward. Finds Welbeck. Now back to Scholes, who chips the ball out to the right towards Ashley Young. And it's headed behind. Safety first for a corner from Traore. And United get their first corner kick of the match. That well, allows Rio Ferdinand and Johnny Evans to go up and join an attack. Yeah, they've been sat back most of the time just very comfortably defending now it's, it's a, a, a great set piece a chance where they've got a little bit of an advantage something different for QPR to handle Van Persie with the kick, it's a good looking corner, Welbeck could have made connection, I think he should have made a connection with it six yards out, but QPR had the ball clear, now it's Ashley Young five yards in from the right hand touchline puts it back out to Van Persie, five waiting for a cross in the middle, Cissé does well to charge it down and QPR will be able to reorganise and some of those central defenders and uh, taller players for United will jog back into position and they'll start again with skulls in the centre circle. Yeah, they just have to be careful when they come out because they come out slow, but three, the forward players and the midfield players come out fast, the back four come out slow, they left a big massive gap that Manchester United if they can exploit that area quickly then you'll get caught and they're right on top of your back four, Manchester United. Well bet, good in the air, Kevin. I fancied that that was a decent chance, you know. Yeah, it's, it's right off the shoulder. You know, he's not wanting to head it, you know, I'm sure... He'll be getting a ribbon off the boys for having shampoo in the showers for after. <laughs> Here's Skulls, 25 yards out, tries to toe-poke it through to Ashley Young. I think he might have been better served having a, an effort at goal, and as Kevin said earlier, testing Julio Cesar with a shot there, but he's won the ball back. And that's uh, very, very typical of Paul Skulls. And now it's out on the left with Evra, and now the crowd urge United on. 20 minutes of the game gone. Well back into the penalty area, to the byline, Van Persie side netting! Several people inside the ground thought it was in. That's how quickly it can happen when you've got players like Robin Van Persie around. It was a brilliant first-time effort, but it's wide of Cesar's right-hand post. Well, he's one of the best as well as coming in on the left-hand side from Welbeck. But, I mean, Van Persie doesn't rush into the area, he just bides his time, and then he just gives a, what, two-yard sprint just to lose the defender, gets in front of it. He's about two yards, three yards in front of the near post, six yards out, gets a little flick on it. As you said, there's a lot of celebrities here actually jumped up thinking it was a goal, but unfortunately <laughs> it was a side netting from our position. We're in good company, aren't we, on this row? Oli, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer, I can see on this row. Ryan Giggs is sat over my left shoulder. Well, there's just an abundance, Manchester United. You've got Peter Schmeichel, Viv Anderson, all there, Brian McClare. Brian McClare's there. Yeah. Oh, there's... You said it's just all the memories of people that have played alongside Sir Alex and... You know, as, as much stick as these players have had off Sir Alex, as much as the hairdryer treatment of, of, they've all had, you know, the respect that he got from these, these players uh, over his generations has just been phenomenal. And Harry Redknapp will be in there somewhere as well, named as the new manager of Queen's Park Rangers this morning, if you are just joining us. Cissé for Queen's Park Rangers. This has got potential. Tarap's going to have a go here from 38 yards out, I'd suggest. And that one barely makes the goalkeeper, but it will count as a shot on target. Uh, you can't really call that a shot on target because <laughs> Lindegaard picked it up about 12 yards out <laughs> with one hand or four fingers, really. He never used his thumb for that one. <laughs> Here's Van Persie, five yards inside the Queen's Park Rangers half. It's nil-nil on five live sports extra. Formula One qualifying still to come. The rugby, England-South Africa is 
on Five Live. Ball chipped over the top by Johnny Evans. He says sorry, curses as he looks at the ground and walks back into his own half because that wasn't a very good ball forward towards Danny Welbeck. And it's still goalless here at Old Trafford. They haven't started games well this season. In fact, they've trailed in 11 of their 19 matches, Manchester United, this season, but come back to win eight of them, which is kind of their style, isn't it? And they've gained an unrivaled 15 points from losing position. So they're not starting matches well this season, Kevin. We're kind of seeing that a little here, aren't we? Yeah, I think what they're doing is they're starting it very, very cautiously. You mm. know, they're trying to just work themselves into games, and sometimes that's quite dangerous because if you get caught out and lose a quick goal from a set piece or whatever... It, it, it hurts you, but as you said, the, the master of the comeback, you know, they've got such I mean, strong willpower to just keep going. They're, they've never been beaten, you know, and we know about Fergie time as well. And that's when they score a lot of goals. A lot yeah. of important goals are scored in that last 10 minutes. Player down injured on the far side. Kevin, I think it's some beer, is it? Yeah. Yeah. And he's got to be careful as well because he just goes into a tackle. Yeah, sent off against Arsenal, wasn't he? With that kick yeah. out at Vermaelen. And he's served his ban now. He's back. Cameroon international. 26 years of age, 40 caps for Cameroon. He looks like he's going to be OK getting treatment on the far side. But at the moment, Queen's Park Rangers have 10 men. He's off the field. And Manchester United have a throw in on the halfway line. Down their right hand side. Look, okay, Kieran Dyer's just slotted in as a full back just now. Jimmy Mackey's. I mean, just gone from behind CC to the right hand side, so they're still keeping the two banks of four. CC's then dropping back, so they're basically sacrificing a, a centre forward up front. Here's Wayne Rooney, 25 yards from goal. He's not really been in the game yet. Chips the ball forward towards Ashley Young, but it's intercepted. Tarap wriggles away from two challenges. It's brilliant from Tarap to give you absolute heart attacks if you are his manager, I'm sure, because he did that on the edge of his own box, but it was brilliant skill, and he lays the ball forward towards Cissé. It's just over here. Johnny Evans tidies up. The goalkeeper slices his clearance, but Manchester United have possession back with Skulls. Now it's with Rooney, challenged by Clint Hill and fouled, and Clint Hill's furious, picks up the ball, says, I won this ball. The referee says no, and it's a free kick to Manchester United, which they take quickly through Darren Fletcher. Well, that's why they're back in, Hill and in one side and uh, Sean Derry both coming in in the challenge Everest cross into the penalty area Rooney's header over the crossbar corner it was Clint Hill who got there just ahead of him and it's United's second corner that looked dangerous from the first one Van Persie trots across to take it again you know, even when they commit the free kick how quickly Manchester United get the ball down get the play underway as fast as they can and that's where Queen's Park Rangers have to, to switch on and not off sometimes if a player switches off you get caught out and that was very close Here's Van Persie's corner. In it comes, bodies in there, cleared away by Queen's Park Rangers, but again, it was dangerous. It really was good delivery, and Van Persie's got another chance to cross. Whips it in, they let it bounce. There's a foul there, a push in the back. And it will be a free kick to Queen's Park Rangers inside their own penalty area. It's nil-nil, and we've had 20 minutes, 25 minutes rather, here at Manchester United. Rain falling more heavily now. Yeah, it's, it's interesting now because Manchester United are... They're realising now that they've got the pace to, to keep Queen's Park Rangers on the counter-attack. They've got the pace, they know that, so they can watch it. Now they've, what they've got to do is start creating things going forward because they've been limited. I mean, Cesar's not really been tested with the one Van Persie, one at the near, the flick at the near post that's gone past the post, but he's not really had to do much, Julio Cesar. And, you know, at the moment, Queen's Park Rangers, I think, will be happier to keep Manchester United at bay. And it's, it's not like Manchester United, not in shots at goal. Well, it's been over three hours now since they've scored, which is very uncharacteristic. I know there was a changed team in midweek at Galatasaray, but they had just the one effort on target, I think, in that game. And the header from Nick Powell, which rattled the woodwork. He's on the bench, Nick Powell, for United. David De Gea is also back after the problem with his wisdom teeth, but only on the bench. Phil Jones, Anderson, Chris Smalling, Javier Hernandez, Tom Cleverley and Nick Powell is the bench for United this afternoon on Five Live Sports Extra. We haven't seen a goal yet here at Old Trafford. Ferdinand switches the play out to the left-hand side to Johnny Evans, who moves forward. QPR sticking in their two banks of four, but Everest cut inside. Now gets it to Rooney, who flicks it up for Paul Scholes. Thought he was going to hit it. Young will hit it. Side netting again. 
again half the ground think he scored but it's another goal kick for Queen's Park Rangers but United are getting closer I tell you what that's the slickest move at pace it was just phenomenal from the left hand side you know very patient build up ever gets it he, he drags from the left hand side he comes inside he looks for Wayne Rooney who's pulled off the centre defenders fantastically but closed down quickly he's got one reaction he flicks it over the defender Derry's head as it's coming down you expect him Paul Scholes just to yeah. do his usual have a volley yeah. at it but he's nonchalantly just knocks it to the side to Ashley Young and it's I mean Ashley Young he deserved to score off that because it was fantastic play from left over to right throw in to Manchester United 10 yards inside their own half on the right I guarantee when you watch that on match of the day tonight you'll be screaming at Paul Scholes to hit it first time because it's one of those that you dream of it was about 16 yards out something like that dropped on his right foot slightly to the, uh, the right and you just think lash it just hit it Especially the way he strikes them would have would have looked like some goal, wouldn't it? Oh, there was no doubt about it because I mean I know a lot of people just look at the little flick from Wayne Rooney over the top and, and then you expect the volley, but it was a move. It was yeah. slow build up on the left. Danny Welbeck then comes in as a centre forward, picks it up, goes back again. But then you say you said it, uh, John. The volley was there to be hit, yeah. but it's the vision he's seen Ashley Young out the corner of his eye to actually play it. Brilliant challenge from Jamie Mackey, who surges forward, 30 yards from goal. He's still going, Mackey, into the penalty area. Wayne Rooney is back there to challenge. Johnny Evans will knock it behind for a goal kick. I thought that came off Evans, I think he did too. And it's a goal kick for Manchester United in front of the Stretford end. But they just lost concentration, as Kevin was saying earlier, and Queen's Park Rangers almost capitalised. Well, that's it, because Jamie Mackey is playing behind CC in that sort of number 10 holding role, but drops back. Paul Scholes is getting allowed to go in front of him get it, he obviously never looked over his shoulder for the first time, but Jamie Mackey closed him down very, very quickly you know, very impressed with the way Jamie Mackey started this match. Sign from Plymouth Argyle by Neil Warner, because Rafael De Silva gets possession, ball forward from Rooney's over hit, goal kick for Queen's Park Rangers, played in the conference for Exeter City, started his career at Wimbledon, and then was there when they moved to MK Dons, played a few games for them there, but then made the move, was playing at Sutton United, you know, not so long ago. He's had an incredible rise and scored against Manchester City, didn't he, in the, on the final day in that famous match last season. He's got bags of energy, bags of pace, can score goals, scored, scored within 11 seconds of his debut at Plymouth. And uh, he, he's getting opportunities. We've seen him score goals like that before as well, Kevin, haven't we, where he, he runs half the length of the pitch and... We know he can do that. He's got the confidence to do it in the Premier League now. Yeah, certainly. There's no doubt about it. He can. And I'm so used to seeing him playing now in a sort of wider right position. But I know he likes to, to actually play as another forward, maybe, and, and, and as a number 10 in that role. But his work rate is, is phenomenal. He's a great, got a great engine. Well, there was a diagonal ball played forward there by Queen's Park Rangers. Traore surged after it. In fact, it wasn't Traore, was it? In Who was it? it was in Bia, wasn't it? Uh, and Bia surged after it and uh, went down rather theatrically and the crowd uh, berated him for it didn't look like a free kick Manchester United had possession of the uh, sorry, Queen's Park Rangers had possession of the ball with Cesar it's nil-nil and we've had half an hour almost at Old Trafford still United can't find the back of the net they have possession with Rafael de Silva scored two so far this season that's a bad challenge from Forlan and uh, the referee decides not to pull a card out. He could easily have done so. And Skulls in the centre circle rolls it square to Evra, who really looks like the one who wants to drive on. And he toe pokes the ball to Welbeck and makes a forward run. But they've gone backwards to Skulls because Queen's Park Rangers are working so hard off the ball. It's complete opposite to what we saw last week against Southampton here. And again, Derry snaps in and toe pokes it away from Danny Welbeck. Evans back to Welbeck though and now forward comes Triore makes the challenge in fact it was uh, Kieran Dyer and there's a foul by Tarat and it'll be a free kick to Manchester United about 15 yards inside the Queen's Park Rangers half on the right they're taking it quickly Skulls into the feet of Welbeck now it's with Evra drifting forward 30 yards from goal tries to slide in Van Persie Queen's Park Rangers though get the interception they picked up possession with Cisse who rolls it to Dyer who scurries over the halfway line down the right he has to check and go back though to Mbia now with Derry in the centre circle the attendance 75,603 this afternoon now here's Traore on the left drifts in field up against Ashley Young 
return to the left-hand side for a change. Watching Queen's Park Rangers attack the Stretford end, and the ball's broken to Dyer, 30 yards out. Toe pokes it square. Nice play from Tarap. Tries to take it round Ferdinand. Strong challenge from Ferdinand, and United have picked up possession with Ashley Young. Will play it back to Rafael de Silva, but they had some rare possession there, Queen's Park Rangers. And you just fancy if Tarap had slipped the challenge of Ferdinand there, he might have been in a good position. Yeah, it's, it's getting them in the right areas, you know. It's, in that final third, he seems to get the ball and then want to pass it. Well, that's his area. That's the one where you want Adel Tarat to actually get on the ball and actually do all his dribbling and his skill because he can go past players, as we've seen early in the game, but he does it all at the halfway line. Overhit pass from Everett. Throw into Queen's Park Rangers, just inside their own half on the left-hand side. It's going to be an interesting one for Harry Redknapp, Adel Tarat, isn't it, Kevin? Because... You know, he let him go at Spurs and called him a fruitcake, I think, <laughs> when he left for a million pounds. What do we think will happen with Tarapt and Harry Redknapp? Well, I must admit, it's going to be mind games because that's happened and they know it's happened uh, from manager and player. I mean, will he go in and say, you're going to be part of my side? And he's there today, he's in the starting lineup today, so he can only go out and prove to Harry Redknapp, well, you shouldn't have sold me from Spurs because I could have, could, have, could have done something in there. But unfortunately, you never, you got rid of me. I'm here to play and I'm here to stay. Since then, though, he's proved he is a player, hasn't he, I think, especially uh, in the Championship. He's let, yet to really set the Premier League alight, as I thought he would when they got promoted. I think I thought he'd be a big player for them. Well, but like, he hasn't quite done it yet. Well, like, he can be, but he does it all in the wrong areas. Mm. And that's why, you know, in this level of football, you can't do it in the wrong areas because you put your, your teammates under pressure and you lose a lot of goals. He can score you a goal, he can lose you a goal. I think that's... Uh, that's, that's him, as Everett takes a pass from Van Persie, but it's a tame shot at the near post, which is collected easily by Julio Cesar. Nice play again, though, by United. One-touch football, but QPR again managed to repel the danger. And they'll be clock-watching now, won't they, Kevin? 12 minutes to half-time. Well, they're clock-watching, but Sir Alex is actually at it as well because he's changing players around now in the system. Here's Welbeck running forward. Rooney with the effort. Cesar saves with his knees and cleared away, but only as far as to wrap. It was a good run from Welbeck. Rooney had opened up for him right-footed about 15 yards out, but his shot, he didn't catch all of it, and Cesar made the save. Well, they're going to have to watch out now, QPR, because the master stroke's been pulled by Sir Alex. You know, he's, he switched Welbrecht from the left to the right, Ashley, Long, Ashley Young over to the left. He's dropped Robin van Persie into the number 10 role and put Wayne Rooney forward. So it's a whole four different front. Uh, it's the same players, but in a different formation now. Corner whipped in by Van Persie. It goes all the way through to Rooney, who's running away from goal on the far side. He trips, though, under the challenge from Mbia, and it's with Kieran Dyer on the right for Queen's Park Rangers. Living dangerously, and when you can do that, when you have got that in your armoury to change things like that, and it just unsettled Queen's Park Rangers for a moment, didn't it? Well, it certainly did, because no, I mean, you're looking at Robin Van Persie, the two centre-halves, picking him up. Clint Hill knew as soon as Wayne Rooney dropped off to get it in midfield, he went very close, very tight with him. Now it's the opposite way around. Wayne Rooney's pushed forward. So it'll take the, the central defenders to, to adjust a little while to adjust to that side of it. And then, of course, with the two wide men. Well, Mackey has got the ball into the penalty area here, and Cissé is going to pick up possession by the corner flag on the right-hand side for Queen's Park Rangers. He's got two men in the middle and decides to go back. There was just a little bit of... Uh, complacency there from Johnny Evans it was a hopeful ball forward from QPR they have possession now with Tarapt and he's got he's isolated Rafael de Silva can he come inside on his right foot he's trying some close control being forced backwards though by de Silva that's good defending and they have to go all the way back back to Derry and now Clint Hill will side foot the ball forward sliding challenge from Forlan and now they bring the ball forward down the left hand side it's with Traore he's got a chance to cross three in the middle He's uh, just chipped it, though, into the arms of Lindegaard, all in green. And that was uh, a bit of a waste, really. He didn't look, must admit, he didn't look confident across it with his left foot there. It was very strange. A lot of feet adjustment just to try and chip it in the middle. And it ends up a, a very poor cross. But, yeah, as you say, you've just run 70 yards as a fullback, And you just waste your cross. It's, it's very disappointing. Mm. Of course, play for Arsenal. Came through their academy. His last game for Arsenal, Kevin, here, 8-2. Maybe that's lying in the back of his mind. <laughs> thinking I need to get back. Forget about the cross. <laughs> yeah, he's already thinking about defending before he's hit the cross, I imagine. 
And that's an example of Tarak giving it away in the wrong area. Sly challenge comes in, Welbeck running forward. They're clattering in the challenges. Shot from Rooney, palmed away by Cesar. And QPR might well break over the halfway line. With Mbia, his giant stride, now into Cissé's feet. Cissé controls it. First touch, just let him down there, Cissé. He's had to check and go back. Aims across into the penalty area, offside. The ball's in the net, but the flag is up. It won't count. But I tell you, it must have been tight. Jamie Mackey's header, six yards out, and that's a let-off. Well, it would have been nice if you could get a nice little replay of it and see it on the far side. But again, Queen Park Rangers just showing how efficient and how fast on the counter-attack they are. And down the middle, where Johnny Evans, Rio Ferdinand, they fall asleep. But it all starts back from Wayne Rooney's shot because his Cesar had saved it. It palmed it out. It went past Paul Scholes, who was coming in late in midfield. He couldn't get back to help his defenders. So right away, Queen's Park Rangers are two versus one down the right-hand side. And that's where all the trouble starts. And Jamie Mackey, I'll tell you what, how, I wonder how close he actually was, because he made a great run. Van Persie with a chance, but it wouldn't sit down for him. And Clint Hill was brave and managed to get the challenge in after the cross from the left-hand side. We still haven't seen a replay of the Jamie Mackey header, which found the back of the net. QPR with some defending to do again, but Ryan Nelson's there. Clears left-footed, 35 years of age, the New Zealander been one of QPR's best players according to supporters this season Rooney in possession, two yards inside two yards from the touchline on the right hand side, plays the ball inside to Fletcher intercepted again by Nelson to Mackey's, broken the challenge of Scholes play on says the referee, it's with Tarat Tarat 15 yards inside the United half, moving forward, tries a shot, takes a deflection corner for Queen's Park Rangers, 7 to the break 0-0 nil, nil on 5 Live Sports Extra John Akers and Kevin Gallagher <laughs> it's been an unbelievable game, you know, Queen's Park Rangers have, have certainly got the... They've come up, they've got the tails up. And I've just managed to see a little clip, John, of the Jamie Mackey goal. And yes, he's just half a yard offside. Got it right, the official on the far side then. Which is, you know, Jamie Mackey's looking right down the line. To wrap, hands on hips, with the corner for QPR, to the near post away but only as far as to wrap five in the middle to aim for if you can find a decent cross he can't two wasted crosses from Adel to wrap it does though find a QPR player who can whip it into the penalty area again it's gone over everyone it will be kept in play by Umbeer he's still got three to aim for in the middle here with six minutes to the break little step overs but he left the ball behind but he has found Derry squares the ball inside and Queen's Park Rangers have had to go all the way back again and you feel maybe they've wasted some good field position there, if you like, but it's Dyer, 10 yards inside the United half. Feigns to chip the ball forward. Goes inside to Forlan, who switches the play over to the right. This is good play. Finds Mbia, who chests it down, then runs forward. Some nice step-overs. He's going to try an effort. Comes off Evra. Good play from QPR, and they've got their third corner. Well, he's definitely, definitely got the, the old step-overs. I see Mbia, like... Uh... I was just wondering what he was doing. I thought he was doing a little bit of sword <laughs> dancing at first. It was like watching Cristiano Ronaldo when he first came well, to United. Yeah, he must have done about five or six. The ball never moved. I, <laughs> I don't I think it was Darren Fletcher was marking him, never moved. No. And it ends up the ball went back <laughs> to the halfway line. It was just very strange. But again, Queen's Park Rangers causing problems. It's a set piece, it's a corner. It's a chance to get something out of it. Terap's delivery needs to be better. Again, he's duffed it to the near post. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Mark Bowen will be tearing his hair out in the technical area. And QPR have uh, had to be forced all the way back to their goalkeeper. That's not a great back pass, that, to Cesar from Traore. And they've put themselves under some pressure here, Queen's Park Rangers. Unnecessarily, Rooney and Young and Welbeck working hard. Traore clears the ball down the line, but it's, it's not the best. And he's just walking back, and Scholes has picked it up. He'll ping the ball diagonally to Van Persie. Lovely first touch. He's got a chance to cross into the near post. He didn't get all of it. Young goes down in the penalty area. Clint Hill is furious. He thinks that Young took a dive. And Van Persie is in there. Rooney with the shot on the turn from the cross from Fletcher. But he dragged it wide of the goalkeeper's left-hand post. Five minutes to the break. No goals. What did you make of that? Ashley Young and Clint Hill still squaring up to each other. It'll be interesting to see a replay of this. Clint Hill doesn't like injustice. He's a good old-fashioned pro, doesn't dive, he doesn't cheat, he doesn't like people who go down when they feel like he, he, they don't need to. Yeah, but I just wonder, because sometimes as a forward, when you're making a run in the box and you want, you just stop, and a defender, doesn't matter, if he runs in, makes contact and you go over, it's a penalty, there's no doubt about it. I think that's something what Clint Hill done. 
although it was a decoy run from Ashley Young and, and referees tend to overlook that side of it there's a possibility there he's barred him in the back he's gone over but Ashley Young is carrying a reputation now of diving and that is the biggest disappointment thing so you don't get anything for that and when you do that as a fellow professional you just have a go at him because the referee looks at that like you are actually he's diving he's diving referee you'd be trying to get him booked and it's, it's kind of un no, I mean, he's on his back. It's a penalty. There's no doubt about it. As we get another glimpse of it, but Clint Hill does what he does good. He's arguing. He's saying that Ashley Young's dived. He's not standing up. But to me, Clint Hill has got far too close to him too quickly. He's made contact and he's took him out again. The there was certainly contact. Kevin is absolutely right. Two hands in the back. Now that happens a lot in the penalty area, but there was contact. Maybe he did go down a little bit easily, but. Maybe he was entitled to if there was some contact. So it's going to be an interesting one to uh, to look at again, that one, Kevin. Yeah, I mean I, I mean, I know Ashley Young does go over reasonably easy. He does at times. And, I, and you just you just hate when people do that. But when you're getting judged on something you're doing and someone bundles you over and they're saying you're diving, you know what I mean? The judgment is people around will say, oh, he's been diving again, he's got away with it. But when you have a look at that, that to me is... He's defending too close, Clint Hill, and if you get caught... Here's Wayne Rooney with the cross, and I'm afraid that's not one of his best. It's gone high over the crossbar and into the stand. A massive miss hit, and it's a goal kick for Queen's Park Rangers, and Manchester United just haven't found their stride in this first half. I'm just wondering if it's a little bit of frustration that's it's creeping into to Wayne Rooney's mind now, you know, because he, he has been well marshaled, he's not really been in the game. Queen's Park Rangers are blocking up all the gaps with the little runs that they're so used to doing. You know, he's hit, I think he's had one shot at goal, Wayne Rooney had a great shot, but it stung the goalkeeper's hands, but it didn't cause any problems. So, you know, it's, it's just uh, getting frustration time now, and I think the longer Queen's Park Rangers keep it like this, I think they will cause Manchester United more problems on this counter-attack. Misjudgment by Rio Ferdinand, chested down by Jamie Mackey for Queen's Park Rangers. Ten yards inside the United half, Queen's Park Rangers, but they've gone back to Nelson and then Hill, playing at centre-back alongside Nelson, bags of experience there, now it's with Tarapt on the left, drifts in field to Forlan, who's duffed the pass square to Derry, that was a, a little bit careless from Forlan, and forward come United over halfway, they don't need a second invitation ball into the feet of Van Persie from Everett, now Scholes to Everett again on the left-hand touchline, drifts in field, he's got Young ahead of him three in the middle now, comes inside on his right foot goes down in a heat with Mbia, but back up on his feet to find Scholes, and now Welbeck, 25 yards from goal, into the feet of Van Persie, but intercepted, finds Rooney though, back to goal 30 yards out, aims it back to Rio Ferdinand, United pressing just before the break, long crossfield ball to Evra, but intercepted, now they might break with Sean Derry, surging towards halfway, he's not played a greatest ball for, but it has found Gibril Cisse, but the momentum of the attack is gone, Derry again, good forward run by Mackey, now it's with Tarrat, 35 yards from goal, now Mackey again, might fancy a shot here, hits it straight into the unmentionables of Johnny Evans, who is still down, I'm not surprised, and United have possession on halfway with Danny Welbeck, back to goal, being forced back by Forlan, now Scholes dribbles the ball forward, finds Young, Young's first time ball to Rooney, Rooney into the penalty area, left hand side, it's a weak effort, I think it was a shot, but it was intercepted, I don't know if it even reached the goal, and away comes and beer for QPR. It's just disappointing, he gets into an area, but what Danny Welbeck and Robin Van Persie do, is they get in there with the defenders, then they pull out for a cutback, but Wayne Rooney takes it on his right foot, just tries to slide it into a gap, and it just goes straight to the goalkeeper, which is pretty disappointing. Two minutes of added time. Two minutes. At the end of the first half, Johnny Evans is still struggling, Kevin. Well, he's just counting just to see if everything's in order. <laughs> just watching the goal again, the uh, replay of the goal that was disallowed for offside correctly. It was offside, Jamie Mackey. But Harry Redknapp watching from the stands, what's his, going to be his assessment of this first half for his new team? Well, his assessment so far is... On the counter-attack, they've been fantastic. been absolutely fantastic. But in the final third, that's where they're lacking. I mean, that's where you can see they're lacking. They're lacking that, that final prowess, that little bit of precision in the final third, where, I mean, someone to score the goals, put the ball in the back of the net. Yes, I know we've seen Jamie Mackey do it offside, 
but that's what they're lacking at this moment in time. United in possession, just before the break here. Scholes is on the wrong wavelength of Fletcher, and QPR have got possession with Forlan. Square to Dyer, who chips the ball to the left to Tarapt. To wrap forward, that's a lovely ball to Mackey, and Mackey it might open up for him here. Cisse is running alongside him. It's still Jamie Mackey. He's now running to a cul-de-sac, but he has found him. Beer on the right, whose first-time ball goes towards Dyer, intercepted by Ferdinand. They've got themselves into some great positions, QPR, but haven't made, managed to take advantage. <laughs> They do brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Jamie Mackey's done fantastically well because he's causing problems with his pace. As soon as he picks it up, he's straight at the heart of the defenders. But CC's made a great run for him from right to left, across the three. And what that's done then is left Ferdinand, Evans, and Evra, three players together. If Jamie Mackey could have just reversed the pass, and it's just a decision, that's all they're lacking at this moment. And they're attacking again with Tarap. Skips past the challenge, and El Tarap with a curler straight at Lindegaard, who gathers it on the left hand side. But just for a moment, you fancy that El Tarapta had just opened up for him. Well, he's got himself into it, probably the best position he's got himself into. Gets himself a dribble, gets a bit of space. But he goes for the, the side foot bending shot. And it's very, very easy for Lindegaard just as the referee goes and, and blows the half-time whistle. Well, an intriguing first half of football. United failing to score once again. It's been well over three, it's four hours now since Manchester United have scored. And QPR... They looked hopeless last week. They've looked hopeless all season. They look like they could get one themselves. They could look like they could do something on the break here. Well, they're, they're certainly... You could see what they've obviously been working on this week. They're going to be playing Manchester United. Now, whether Mark Hughes had, had been there with Eddie Nevesky and Mark Bowen and, and basically set out the structure of how we're going to play. But they've come to the plan. They've stuck with their plan. And the plan's working. On the counter-attack, they've certainly caught Manchester United, I, mean, I must admit, about seven, eight times. But they've just not got that creative flair in the final third. And, and that's a disappointing thing. We've seen one offside goal from Jamie Mackey, very unlucky. It was just the timing of the run was just out. But in general play, Manchester United have, have struggled to break a resilient Queen's Park Rangers down. Half-time then at Old Trafford in the rain. Harry Redknapp watching on with interest. Sir Alex Ferguson's got a statue behind the stands, but his teams can't find the back of the net at the moment. It's Manchester United nil, Queen's Park Rangers nil. The 1920s, silent films, the Model T car, and medium wave radio. This is the BBC Light Programme. Today, 3D TV, transport by renewable energy, and digital radio. Five Live is available on digital radio, digital TV, mobile, and online, so you can listen in quality, whether you're in your kitchen, your car, or at the match using your smartphone. Find out more about which way is best for you at bbc.co.uk slash Five Live, where you'll also find terms of use. bbc.co.uk slash Five Live. Live from Old Trafford, John Akers and Kevin Gallagher. Live second half commentary on the way for you here on Five Live Sports Extra. Then the game will switch to Five Live with John Murray and Kevin Gallagher and we'll bring you qualifying here on Sports Extra from the Brazilian Grand Prix. Now, Mark Hughes isn't the only manager to have lost his job this week. Roberto Di Matteo was replaced as Chelsea boss by Rafael Benitez. His first game in charge is against the champions, Manchester City, and you can hear that on BBC Five Live from four tomorrow. Former German international Dietmar Hamann played under both Hughes and Benitez, and speaking to Colin Murray on BBC Five Live last night, the ex-Liverpool and Manchester City player said it was inevitable that Hughes would be sacked. I think it's not too much of a surprise to see him go because um, you know they were staying in the Premier League by the skin of the teeth last season after spending quite a, a few quid and, and bringing a lot of players in and the same happened again this summer. Uh, they used more players in the last 14, 15 months than any other Premier League club, I think nearly 50. Um, and with the, with the quality they've got there, I don't think that they should be where they are in the I don't think it's too much of a surprise if you're bottom of the league with four points after 12 games. Uh, the timing is slightly surprising because they've got a game tomorrow and um, you know you wonder why that hasn't been done on Sunday or Monday. I just wonder, given the game, you, you're not going to turn it around against Manchester United, although Norwich fans will be screaming at the radio now after last weekend. So maybe that played a part. Also, uh, I mean, is it a cliche? Is it chairman's 
vote of confidence, not worth the, the paper it's printed on or the tweet it's sent out on. It seems so often when somebody says, absolutely, a manager's not going to go, we know what's about to happen. Yeah, but if you don't want to, if you don't, you know, value or rate what a, what a chairman says, don't ask him. Because if he's getting asked every day, what is he going to say? He's not going to mm. say, yeah, I'll give him one more game and if he doesn't win, he's going to get the sack. Uh, you know, there's only so much he can say. Obviously, he wants to back him. And obviously, he hoped that things will turn around. They had a massive game last weekend uh, against a, a fellow relegation contender in Southampton, which they uh, lost uh, very, you know, very clearly. And mm. um, so it's it's only so much a, a chairman can say. And these days, with uh, you know the social network insights, you know they they're in the spotlight all the time. They get asked all the time, every day, and you know they can only say so much. End of the day, if things. Don't go your way as a manager. If results don't come, you know, eventually, you know, the, the day will come where you won't be in a job anymore. Everyone I've talked to who've played under Mark Hughes has told me what a great manager he is. Um, can you not be the right fit for a club? Because it looks kind of tailor-made. Didi, you've got, you know, he had money to spend. He had a team to mould. Yeah, he's he's had his problems at uh, at City in the end. And, uh, you know, a lot of money was spent there. And then the, the owners there thought that they... That they underachieved in the end. Um, so going to QPR, I, I don't, I don't believe there's a there's a perfect fit for a manager or a club. You know, I believe the good managers they can work, uh, you know, for any club. Um, but with him, for one reason or another, he didn't get the best out of the teams. I think the a big issue was the disciplinary record. I think that more people sent off than any other club. Um, you know, if you've it's hard enough to win games in the in the Premier League with 11 men. Uh, if you finish games with 10, it makes it even harder for you. So maybe this is something that should have been addressed earlier. Um, and I don't know why uh, why they didn't get the best out of these players because uh, clearly there's been talk in the paper this week that there's rifts uh, within the team, the players who got the team up or the mm. club up two years ago, the new ones coming in who want big money. Um, and if you haven't got the team spirit, then you need somebody who really enforces that and really really gets everybody pulling in the same direction and uh, it doesn't seem to be him so that means that uh, the opposite side of the coin is that Harry Redknapp's the the perfect man to bring in somebody who's got this track record of the first 18 months at least when he comes into the club he does bind them together and he does get results yeah it looks like they've got deeper line problems as I said you know if you've got a rift within the team that you've got certain cliques and groups then you know this is always very detrimental and it's very hard to win games if you have that but as you say, Harry is known to, to gel people and to bring people together. So uh, in that respect, he would probably be a, a very good fit. Mm. Your relationship with Rafa Benitez must have been cemented on that night in Istanbul when you took your tracksuit off and you came on and, and changed one of the most famous games in, in European history. Um, he may not be welcomed by every Chelsea fan. He may not be welcomed by any Chelsea fans. But do you think that's the right fit for Chelsea at the moment? I think it's a, it's a very good fit because I think what Chelsea needs at the moment is somebody with a strong hand, uh, and I think the players have been have been too powerful in in recent seasons and years. This is why why the club went through five or six managers uh, in in five or six years, and uh, they need somebody there who, who calls the shots and he tells him how it is. And they've got a a, a master tactician in charge now. Um, yes, he may not be too well liked by the Chelsea fans or too well welcomed, but. You know, if he wins football matches, which he will do, you know, and you know, ask him in eight weeks' time, in three months' time, what they think about him then, mm. um, because I think he's a he's a guy who, with a with a with a capable, talented squad, more or less guarantees your titles. He will win you more games than he loses, and I think uh, with him in charge now, I think they stand a very very good chance to challenge the two Manchester clubs. Give me a few more specifics, Didi. You shared a, a dressing room with him for years. What what makes him such a special manager in in your eyes? I didn't share a dressing room with him. Uh, I played for him. He had his dressing room. He didn't get changed with the players, so just want to <laughs> want to stress that. Shared a football uh, club with him. <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> right. Now he's just a, a very uh, meticulous, particular worker who, who puts attention to details and, and doesn't leave uh, any stone unturned. And, and he's got all bases covered. He watches probably more football than anybody else. And he's just a... Uh, a very very knowledgeable man and I don't say that lightly I'd be very surprised if there's too many people out there who know more about the game he sees it and he, he can analyse it and he knows what, what needs doing and what doesn't need doing um, the way he works I think there's not too many managers these days where when they work with a club for 6 months 12 months you see like a handwriting the way they play mm. I think he's got that he said at the Valencia I think he brought it into Liverpool where he turned a club that's yeah, had decent success into a team that's been to two Champions League finals in three years. 
uh, you know, FA Cup winners, uh, I think a League Cup winner, and he nearly won the won the league. Um, and if you, you know, people question him and they say he's negative, um, he couldn't be further away from the truth because he always wanted to score the next goal, even if you're winning one, two, three nil. He never said we sit back and we let him come on to us. He always wanted to score another goal. And you have to work with what you've got. You know, we at times didn't have the, the ammunition and the quality to go out and, and attack teams and play them off the park. And you need to see what you've got and, and then find a way to win football matches. It is inevitable, though, Dini, between now and the end of the season, he will be viewed as somebody who is there until Pep Guardiola is ready to come back in to management. That seems to me like that hamstrings him slightly, that ties his hands behind his back. I'm not sure about that because, yes, in a way, I think he's taken a bit of a chance because if it doesn't work out well, it may be even harder to get a job next time round. But at the same time, he's been out nearly two years and he wants to win trophies and he wants to work in England. There's too, not too many clubs you can do that in England and Chelsea is, is obviously one of them because they've got a very, very talented squad. But people talk about Guardiola. Guardiola has not managed a team outside Spain. Mm. So when people talk about a perfect fit, you don't know whether he'll be successful at Chelsea. Yes, he's been unbelievable at Barcelona. Um, but, you know, he, he's had a, a, a very, very good team there with some outstanding individual players. Um, so there's no no guarantees in football. You can't take anything for granted. And if Rafa does well, I'd be very surprised uh, if, if, for example, he were to win the league this season. I'd be very surprised if he's not there next season. Maybe you could point to Avram Grant, got them to the Champions League final, sacked. You could point to Roberto Di Matteo, won the Champions League, the elusive European Cup for Chelsea, sacked already this season. What would he might have to fire thunderbolts out of his backside to keep the job? I mean, they're they're competing in five trophies. He may need them all. Yeah, true, true. Well, it's out of his hands in the Champions League because if uh, I think if Juventus doesn't lose next week, they'll be out of the Champions League. Mm. Um, so you know that there could be one competition less already. Um, I don't know what he needs to do. It, it depends on the owner. But at the same time, if the owner, you know, he spends so much money at the football club, I'm not saying it's right what he's doing, but if he feels uh, a manager should go, then it's obviously it's sound him. He's got every right to sack him every three months if he wants to. Mm. Uh, whether it's uh, any good for the football club long term, I'm not too sure. Didier Herman on last night's Five Live Sport with Colin Murray. Just some scorelines elsewhere to let you know about. In the Premier League, Sunderland 2, West Bromwich Albion 4 is a full-time scoreline from the early kickoff. West Brom going 2-0 up through Gira and Long. And then one back from Gardner. Then um, Lukaku made it 3-1, Sessignon 3-2. And then right at the end, Fortune made it 4-2 for West Bromwich Albion. Elsewhere in the Premier League, Everton are leading Norwich City by a goal to nil. Stephen Naismith has got the goal there. Manchester United nil-nil here against Queen's Park Rangers at Old Trafford. Stoke City won Fulham nil. And it's Charlie Adam who scored there for Stoke City. And Reading are leading 1-0 at Wigan Athletic. And Morrison has scored their goal. In the Championship, Barnsley nil, Cardiff 1, Blackburn nil, Millwall nil, Blackpool nil. Watford 2, did I say Blackburn? Blackburn 0, Millwall 0, Blackpool 0, Watford 2. 0-0 nil, nil between Brighton and Bolton and Charlton and Huddersfield. Burnley are winning 1-0 at Hull. Peterborough winning 1-0 at Ipswich. Leeds 0, Crystal Palace 0. Middlesbrough 1, Bristol City 1. Sheffield, Sheffield Wednesday 0, Leicester City 1. And Wolves 1, Nottingham Forest 1. And later here on Sports Extra, we'll bring you Derby County versus Birmingham City from 5.20. That's after the F one qualifying Kevin Gallagher has just eaten some sort of chocolate dessert in front of me not only that was basically gloating the entire way through because we can't get out you see here at Manchester United Kevin has essentially been employed today because he's five foot eight rather than six foot four and can <laughs> fit into the press box but I tell you what if you carry on eating like that you won't fit the other way I'll tell you what that was the <laughs> best kick you'll ever have so, is this how it works? Is it, it's just for the talent, is it? The, the, the cakes? <laughs> so you have to get your order in early. <laughs> I wasn't aware there was even a, a process to go through. We're awaiting the teams here at Old Trafford for the second half. And it's certainly more interesting, Kevin, than I thought it would be. I thought United would be 3-0 up now and cruising. I think most people in the ground did. And there's a sense of frustration amongst the supporters. And that's Queen's Park Rangers' best chance. Oh, it's, there's no doubt about it. They've come, they've set the stall out. They're sitting midway in their own half. They're just going to try and catch Manchester United on the counter-attack. And Manchester United are actually attacking 10 yards inside Queen's Park Rangers' half. So 
realistically, if they do get caught in a counter-attack, they've got 10 yards to run before a player can be offside. And that's what's allowing people like Jamie, Ma Jamie Mackey, Jibril Sisi, to run beyond Johnny Evans and Rio Ferdinand and cause the problems on the counter-attack. They just they aren't, are the lucky side for Manchester United is that when they get into that final third run about 20 yards from uh, Lindegaard's goal, Queen's Park Rangers don't know what to do with the ball. Would the hairdryer have been on or would it just been set to cold, do you think, from Sir Alex Ferguson? I think it's set to cold, just basically be careful with the, the back door, really, because that's where they're getting caught. The, the, the press is so much harder. Just take the pace up a little bit with the pass and the 1-2s, because when they've done that, they've got in between Queen's Park Rangers, but they just haven't quite really tested Cesar in the goal. He's had a couple of good saves, easy saves for a goalkeeper, shall we say, but it's not been the Manchester United that you're so used to Old Trafford, the ball being sucked in. In the rugby, on five live, England six, South Africa 16 at the moment. And England going well in the cricket in the second test in Mumbai against India. Kevin Peterson and Alistair Cook have guided them to 178 for two in reply to India's 327. Queen's Park Rangers will have the kick-off in the second half here at Old Trafford. Nil-nil it stands here. And it's... Uh, Sean Derry over the ball with Mackey who had the ball in the net in the first half but it was ruled out correctly for offside and away we go for the second half I'd say only two thirds of supporters back in their seats at the moment and that includes all the uh, former players, United legends that have uh, been at the game today to my left Gary Neville is back in his seat and Manchester United are in possession with a bit of renewed vigour and maybe a little bit too much vigour from Robin Van Persie, whose right foot pass forward escapes the run of Welbeck and it's behind for a goal kick. We're not finally in on the Wi-Fi, Kevin, are we? No, I'm using 3G now because the Wi-Fi here at Old Trafford is <laughs> absolutely ridiculous. Well, there isn't there isn't a Wi-Fi, that's uh, essentially... There is one, but you can't get on it. Yeah. Rain falling here and darkness descending and the crowd quiet. Very, very quiet indeed. And if you think in that first half, Julio Cesar maybe had a couple of saves to make, but that was it. They hit the side netting a couple of times, United. There were some really nice moves in there. But they haven't managed to find a way past Queen's Park Rangers, who've been disciplined, sat in two banks of four, and have marshalled themselves very well indeed, offside against Van Persie. And it's a free kick to Queen's Park Rangers, just outside their 18-yard box. And we've had a minute of the second half on Five Live Sports Extra. It is quiet, isn't it, Kevin? It is. It's, it's not eerily quiet, you know. The supporters are just coming back to their seats from their, their half-time prawn sandwiches to their left and their half-time pies to, to the stands in front of us. So, I mean, they're just getting back into their seats, getting ready to basically uh, start there. I would imagine for the Manchester United fans, there'll be attack, attack, attack. Yeah. To our left, it's prawn sandwiches and soup. And to our right, it's Bovril. I like Bovril, but I'll tell you what, I like that chocolate cake even more. <laughs> it's the only time you ever fancy a cup of warm gravy, isn't it, when you're at football? I've never really understood it. There's no other time in life you say, I fancy a cup of gravy. Yeah. But the idea is you sell the Bovril with the pie, you pour the Bovril into the pie, because that's where your gravy is. Wow, he's not just good at playing football, he's good at watching it as well, as that's a misplaced pass from Ashley Young, some whistles and sighs around the ground, and it's a another goal kick to Queen's Park Rangers and they'll be saying to themselves we keep this nil-nil until an hour and it'll get twitchy well there's, there's no doubt about it you know the, if you look at it in general play in the first half they would have said well if we can keep it quiet for the first 20 minutes we keep the home crowd quiet then we settle into the game we'll see what Manchester United have at us and they've done that but they've actually done it for 45 minutes so I'll probably say the better chances but not being able to actually really test Anders Lindergaard out so the second half will be the same again. Mm. So for the first 20 minutes, it'll be keep Manchester United at bay. Well, I tell you what, Julio Cesar is living dangerously. He received the ball from a back pass. Wayne Rooney was approaching, and instead of just clearing it with his right foot, he switched it back onto his left foot, beat Rooney. Van Persie was closing down, and he managed to clear the ball away. And now Tarapt is in possession. Slides the ball through early towards Mackey, when maybe, just for once, he'd have been better off carrying on there, Tarapt. And it's a sliced clearance from Lindegaard, the Dane, straight up in the air. And De Silva, the Brazilian for Manchester United, brings the ball forward. Now it's nice ball down. 
Van Persie in towards Rooney. And a very warm welcome to those of you listening around the globe on BBC World Service. I'm with Kevin Gallagher. It's John Akers here in the chair. And it's nil-nil at Old Trafford. I know you're probably tuning in expecting us to say Manchester United 3, Queen's Park Rangers nil. But it just hasn't been that way so far, Kevin. Certainly not. It's certainly not. Queen's Park Rangers, to me, in the first 45 minutes of been the better side on the counter-attack they've set the stall out two banks of four and uh, Jamie Mackey just in behind CC being the pace in the outlet and uh, they've caused a lot of problems for Manchester United but Manchester United have been very very frustrated with the lack of chances at uh, Julio Cesar's goal Paul Scholes is in possession just on the halfway line for United you've gone with De Silva Evans Ferdinand and Evera as the back four from right to left Fletcher and Scholes just in front of them then well back and Ashley Young out wide and they're switching and then Rooney and Van Persie up front for Manchester United as Queen's Park Rangers break up the United attack and are in possession on the lip of the centre circle with Tarap, the Moroccan, who chips the ball over the top. But it's got too much pace on it, and Lindegaard picks it up for Manchester United, the goalkeeper. Julio Cesar in goal for Queen's Park Rangers, then a back four of Traore, Umbia, the Cameroon international, Ryan Nelson, the New Zealander, and Clint Hill, Sean Derry and Forlan, the Argentinian just in front of them, and then Maki, Tarap and Dyer playing in behind Cisse as the lone striker and they've got possession again here Queen's Park Rangers and it's with Adele Tarap moving forward tries to play a ball through towards Mackey but Ferdinand is there he scuffed it to be honest I think he was trying to find Cisse and Manchester United are back in possession again and the crowd here at Old Trafford with five minutes of the second half played are a little twitchy they're a little edgy they expected their team to be winning by one two or three goals but as it stands United haven't scored for over four hours of football now and that's a disappointing thing. You know, the, the last two games, 1-0 defeats. You know, they'll be looking to get back on the score sheet and quickly. Rooney, lovely ball to Ashley Young. Here's his ball into the penalty area. Clint Hill acrobatically slides in, clears away with his right foot, but only as far as Rooney. Lovely 1-2 with Fletcher. And now Scholes on the edge of the box, but a brilliant tackle from Clint Hill. And away goes Mackey for Queen's Park Rangers on the break. Over the halfway line, gives it to Tarap. Midway inside the half, centre field. Plays it in towards Cissé. Can he get a shot away here on his left foot? He scuffed it. What a great opportunity for Cissé. Comes off the ankles of Rio Ferdinand. He's got the ball back here, Cissé, but he's been forced with his back to goal, plays it to Tarat, might fancy a shot as the rain pours down in Manchester, it's a slick surface, it's perfect for football, the surface here, infield from Dyer to Forlan, Queen's Park Rangers with possession, deep inside the Manchester United half, only one to aim for in the middle at the moment as Traore thinks about a cross, he beats Welbeck, he's to the byline, Welbeck slides in and that's a corner to Queen's Park Rangers. <laughs> well, it's a good breakaway again, you know, they get caught, Manchester United defending, but and the thing I like with, with Rio Ferdinand, when CC makes his run, he's actually communicating with Lindegaard. He's actually telling him, don't come out your goal. I've got it covered. Even though I'm a yard behind him, I've got it covered. I'm going to shepherd him out the way. And he did. He got my way far enough from goal. Short corner. Tarat picks it up. 30 yards from goal. Slides in Dyer. They're queuing up in the middle here for QPR. Dyer to the byline. It's a goal. Queen's Park Rangers are ahead. And it's Jamie Mackey. Would you believe it? Mark Hughes sacked yesterday. And the players have responded at Old Trafford in the best possible way. Harry Houdini might well have an easier job of escaping than he first thought. It's Manchester United nil. Queen's Park Rangers won. Well, we see, you know, they've, they've caught Manchester United on numerous occasions, but it's a well-worked corner kick. You know, his left, on the left-hand side, Kieran Dyer, and he gets back into play. It looks like he's, he's gone down a cul-de-sac, but defending from Van Persie, the handling from Lindergaard down low, is very, very poor defending from Manchester United's point of view. He can only palm it out in front of Jamie Mackey, who, to me, has been Queen's Park Rangers' best player so far in the game. Well, Kevin... Could you have ever have written this script? Harry Redknapp was out of his seat in front of us in the director's box. Mackie's celebration tells a story in itself. And Sir Alex Ferguson, the day after the statue is unveiled in his honour, behind the stand opposite us, is chewing furiously on his gum as Van Persie is fouled. He's down on one knee. And Manchester United have got to come from behind again this season. 11 of their 19 matches so far, they've gone behind. They've come back to win eight of them. Well, they've got 36 minutes to do that here at Old Trafford. Well, it's going to be tense, isn't it? We said they always give it 20 minutes in the second half to get on with things, but they're finding themselves behind. But they've got a nice free kick in a nice area to get a chance to get something on it. 
Ashley Young's ball into the box from the free kick, headed away, it wasn't very well hit, six in the middle waiting for a cross, in it comes, headed away again, only as far as Scholes, toe pokes it forward, doesn't find a Manchester United player, and Queen's Park Rangers are breaking over halfway, Cissé, Mackie's outside him, still Cissé, 20 yards out, fires the shot against the legs of Darren Fletcher, and that was the wrong option, Jamie Mackie wanted it, Queen's Park Rangers are in possession, frustration all around the home supporters 75,000 in Old Trafford and at the moment they can't believe what they're seeing they can't you know but that's no disrespect to Queen's Park Rangers because they're doing very well Triore's cross into the box cleared away by Evans and Queen's Park Rangers are coming for more here it's dire foul by Paul Stoles clumsy challenge and for persistent fouling he's going to be booked by Lee Probert and it's a free kick right in Adel Tarap territory 25 yards out just to the left of the D well, was it frustration from Paul Scholes because Kieran Dyers had got a nice little turn on him. He's only, what, 20 yards out. But Paul Scholes comes across the back of him, trying to nick the ball, but nowhere near it. He catches Dyer on the on the knee, you know, and it, and it sets it up because if, if Queen's Park Rangers were to score off of this, you know, 2 nothing down, they're finding it hard to break Queen's Park Rangers down, and you just wonder, you know, as they're into their third game without scoring goals and how nervous and tentative the players out there will be and how long before Sir Alex makes his first change it's about 23 yards out I'd say something like that it's to the left of the D it's perfect for a right footer it couldn't be set up better it's far enough out to get it up and over the wall the pitch is greasy the ball will be wet to wrap his hands on hips with his gloves on the Moroccan eyeing up the situation up he steps tips it over the wall it ripples the roof of the net but it's over the crossbar and behind for a Manchester United goal kick well, he's, he's, he's gone down nonchalantly to that, hasn't he? He's just trying to clip it over the the top of the wall into Tjander's Lindegaard's top right-hand corner, but the goalkeeper was so quick across the line, there was not a lot of pace in the ball. He's across there. If it's on target, he saves it. Manchester United nil. Queen's Park Rangers won on Five Live Sports Extra and BBC World Service. Former Blackburn striker Kevin Gallagher and John Akers, your team. Not quite believing our eyes at the moment. The Skulls is in possession. United have lost three games already this season. They've never won a championship losing six or more. They're staring defeat in the face at the moment. The Skulls has got possession on the edge of the box. Plays a nice ball to Rafael De Silva. Queuing up in the middle. Takes a deflection. Behind for a corner. And now for the first time, we really hear this Manchester United crowd. Corner in front of the Stretford end. 12 minutes of the second half gone. Manchester United nil, Queen's Park Rangers 1. Well, the players have to do something to get the crowd going. You know, they have to attack with pace, get that change of pace, but they've been dragged down to a, a slower pace, which suits Queen's Park Rangers defensively. Corner from the right-hand side. Van Persie swings it in. Header down from Hill and away by Umbia. I don't think Mackie's going to keep that one in. Just have a listen to Queen's Park Rangers' away record. Failed to win in their last 19 away, Kevin conceded in every one of their last 22 away matches. They lose their manager on a Friday. They're 1-0 up at Manchester United with 33 minutes to go. Yeah, and I think Sir Alex has uh, he's had enough of, of seeing what he's seeing and knowing that his team are behind, and it looks like he's ready to get a couple of players on. Anderson is stripped off, ready to come on. It could be for Scholes in the centre, perhaps, or Fletcher. Scholes has got possession on the lip of the centre circle inside the Queen's Park Rangers half. Now De Silva on the right, certainly playing with more urgency now United than they did in the first half. Now it's Evra, who's played with purpose whenever he's got possession. Goes past Mbia, and is going to be booked here for bringing down Evra. What did you make of that one, Kevin? I, I can only think it was because Mbia made himself look really big by extending his arms out like an aeroplane. And when Ever has gone past him, he's flicked it around one side, he goes to go round the other. Now you've got to, to run past what a foot and a half of hand while your hands in the air, but I think it's an accidental clash of, of feet, I think it is at the end of it, when you get a, a proper look at it that's, that's the three kick side of it. So he's very lucky to get that. Ashley Young goes off. Anderson is on the Brazilian. Ashley Young has uh, failed to quite do it, and it is Paul Scholes who's gone off, and it's Chicorito, the little P who is on, Javier Hernandez, the Mexican, who's in a rich vein of scoring form. He's got eight goals this season. And Rooney will have this free kick. The two in the wall, but it looks like it's a position to cross rather than shoot. It's 30 yards out, but it's 
quite a way over to the left-hand side. In it comes right-footed, good delivery. Cesar, the Brazilian, punches with two fists, only as far as Silver on the right-hand side. Five yards in from the right-hand touchline. He's got a chance to cross. There are six in the middle. Drifts inside on his left foot. Now it's with Anderson for his first touch. Into the feet of Scholes. 1-2. Slide challenge from Forlan. And now QPR might break again. It's with Tarap surging over the halfway line down the left-hand side. He's got three with him. Manchester United retreating. Here's Cissé 25 yards from goal. And now Kieran Dyer across the face of goal. Couldn't find Mackey. I think he should have had a go himself. It's a goal kick for Manchester United. It's a hard angle to score for from Kieran Dyer. But I must admit, that's four players absolutely for Queen's Park Rangers sprinting. 50, 60 yards to get up the park you know and, and CC picks Dyer out with a great ball it's a great run from Jamie Mackey he's expecting it down the side of Rio Ferdinand doesn't get it but as it comes to Kieran Dyer he's 16 yards but he's at the angle and it's a tough one he's trying to roll it across the goal in the hope that Jamie Mackey looks up but Jamie Mackey was slow to react they're going to bring another defender on here Rio Ferdinand's brother Anton is going to come on for Queen's Park Rangers but he'll have to wait because United are in possession and moving forward down the left-hand side on Five Live and BBC World Service. Rooney, lovely ball out to the right to Rafael De Silva. Four in the middle, early cross, headed behind by Clint Hill. They're flinging everything at Queen's Park Rangers now. It's another corner, and we're going to be the, see the substitution made. Ferdinand is going to come on for Traore. <laughs> yeah, I think Traore, when he was blocking across just early in the second half, I think the ball's caught his foot. And I think he's, he's been over on his ankle a little bit. I think maybe that's why the, the substitutions, he's been toiling a little bit. But I think on that left-hand side, when Traore, you need him fit because Tarat, at some stage, just like we've seen, will not cover back and help you defensively. And you end up getting caught in a wider area. Well, Mark Bowen hugs Traore as he comes off. On comes Anton Ferdinand, who will slot in at centre-half with Clint Hill going to left-back. I would have thought that's what they'll do, but we'll have to wait and see if that's right. It's a corner for Manchester United in front of the Stretford end. It's going to be a corner left-footed from Van Persie. Cesar does well, punches to the edge of the area. Fletcher is beaten to the ball by Mackey, who just has not stopped running. And he closes down Rafael de Silva. Finds Rooney 10 yards inside the QPR half. Poor ball, though, intercepted to Rat, midway inside his own half. Out on the right, it's Kieran Dyer. Started his first game since the first day of last season, incredibly, Kieran Dyer. And he's put in a decent shift, I'll tell you as well. Had his share of injuries, of course, the former Newcastle United and West Ham player. But he certainly hasn't left anything behind today. No, he certainly hasn't. He's playing more in a defensive role than when I played with him at Newcastle. You know, he's very attacking-minded, very fast. But now he's just holding a position. He's clever enough to do it on the right-hand side for Queen's Park Rangers. Sean Derry intercepts. Sent off here last season. Anderson bringing the ball forward. Anxious faces all around Old Trafford. De Silva on the overlap, it's like a whippet, but he fell over like one turning on dirt and it's going to be a goal kick for Queen's Park Rangers. 28 minutes remaining and the scoreboard reads in bright red letters, Manchester United nil, Queen's Park Rangers 1. Yeah, and they'll be disappointed with it, you know, it's, it's first and foremost, it's Manchester United's had to react to the result because they've been dominant in play going forward, but... You know, they've not been resilient because Queen's Park Rangers on numerous occasions have caught them on that counter-attack. And the problem was that QPR just couldn't punish them. Now they've got their, their noses in front. They feel a little bit more confident, but I'm sure there'll be more to come from Man Manchester United. Well, it's Queen's Park Rangers who are in possession with Mackey. And now Umbia, back from suspension after kicking out at Vermaelen and getting sent off at the Emirates. They've given away possession, though, Queen's Park Rangers, and they have left men up the field this time and there will be tired legs out there in the Queen's Park Rangers team at the moment but that's poor from Welbeck Forlan intercepts and gives it to Tarat on the left hand side who cuts inside gives it to Mackey who's got all the time in the world just to play it square to Dyer and then Forlan and the Olays are going up from the Queen's Park Rangers fans to our right hand side and they've still got possession but given away by Dyer he looks a little tired now Dyer I'll be honest with you and now it's with Rooney, who's bringing the ball forward from inside his own half. He switched to be the main striker for a while, but he's retreated deeper and deeper, and Beer goes down. It will be a corner, though, Kevin. What was your, your reading of that? All right, so we've got Tom Daly from Mbia there. You know, it's, <laughs> it's frightening when you, you talk about forwards diving and getting booked, but when the defenders are going back and tracking back, he kicks the ball clearly for a corner and decides to have a, 
I throw it to the ground to, to get a free kick. Corner for United from the left. Rooney takes this one. High to the far post. Header down. Scrapping. Goal. United are back level. And it's Johnny Evans who's got the goal. Just three yards out in front of the Stretford end. And Manchester United score once again. 55 games in a row in the Premier League. They've scored here at Old Trafford. And they're back in the game. Manchester United won. Queen's Park Rangers won. Well, what a way to try it. You know, they've, they've been struggling in general play. Then we'll do it from a set play. And it's a great, it's a second ball as the ball's knocked down. You know, Johnny Evans, he's out the picture. Doesn't look like anything can happen from him. But what he does cleverly, he gets away from his markers. He goes in from Clint Hill, who acrobatically is trying to clear off the line. He puts his head in where it can hurt and puts the ball in the back of the net. But, you know, Manchester United, Sir Alex put on the double substitution and already... It's paid off for him, even though it's one of his players that started. His third of the season, Johnny Evans, was a doubt for today's game. This is a bit of a fracas broken out in the middle here between Derry and Robin Van Persie. And the referee's in there to break it up. I don't think there's uh, going to be any repercussions for anyone. Manchester United have a free kick, 15 yards inside the QPR half. And now they'll be dangerous, now they've got their tails up. Oh, this is when they are dangerous, you know when... It's like a telepathic thing that the managers always seem to have, especially Sir Alex, when he puts on the substitutions. It seems to change the game and it, it gets players to, to lift their game a little bit. But I think it's when it's a double substitution, the players think, oh my goodness, there's something happening. The manager's not happy. Let's go. Fletcher, going to try one from long range with his right foot, but it's over the crossbar and into the crowd behind the goal. And it's a goal kick for Queen's Park Rangers. What do Queen's Park Rangers do now? Because United have suddenly got their tails up. They'll be feeling tired. What do you think Mark Bowen does now with the substitutions? Well, he's, I mean, he's, he's, he's brought the one on already because he had to take priority off. He's, he's got Ferdinand in there. He's had a little reshuffle defensively. And, and, and that's the, the hardest thing to do because they've got to try and settle into their shape pretty, pretty quickly because Anton's not a left back. That's what he's playing over on the left-hand side. But it's just keeping that shape because they've not really done anything wrong. And I think if Queen's Park Rangers can keep the door closed now to the end of the game and take 1-1 one, one. they would take that at the start of the game you know there's nothing about it because they've done nothing wrong but Manchester United will keep pressing that button to get this winning goal now and it's going to be added more pressure on Queen's Park Rangers well United haven't drawn a game this season so history suggests that there will be a goal and at the moment you fancy it'll be for United although Queen's Park Rangers have looked dangerous on the break here's Rooney 30 yards from goal on his right foot centre field finds to Silva on the right-hand side. Little Cruyff turn, puts in a cross, blocked. He's got it back, though, to Silva. He's going to the byline. Welbeck with the back heel. Away by Clint Hill, left-footed. Only as far as Ferdinand. 35 yards from goal. Five queuing up in the middle. Still Ferdinand. Tries to find Chikorito. Now it's with Van Persie. He hits a shot from distance. Didn't get any power behind it. Straight into the arms of Cesar, who volleys first time downfield towards Cissé. But Ferdinand is underneath it with a towering header 1-1 23 minutes remaining at Old Trafford on 5 Live Sports Extra and World Service Tarapt has gone down injured in a heap the crowd here want him to get up it's with Welbeck on the right 3 in the middle United throwing bodies forward good interception by Forlan who's been terrific just in front of the back four today so has Derry and he's just got straight back up here Cissé and now clears the ball, so not so injured after all, Kevin. No, he's, he's lying down there, he's looking for a free kick. You know, it's, it's quite embarrassing sometimes, you know. He's lying there, Queen's Park Rangers win the ball back and he just jumps up. Welbeck with a cross to the far post. Rooney can't bring it down, it'll roll through to Evra by the left-hand touchline. Back inside now to Wayne Rooney. Beat some beer, still going. Ever on the overlap, corner for Manchester United. Now they're turning the screw and Wayne Rooney will go across to take it. Yeah, now the pressure's coming now, it's... It's how long, I mean, Queen's Park Rangers, if they're going to defend, they have to defend further up the park now, they're defending their 18-yard box, which is very dangerous. Rooney's cross, to the far post, header goes in, goal again, and United come from behind again, and after a terrible year, it's Darren Fletcher who gets his first of the season for Manchester United. And Fergie time does it again. United come good late. It's Manchester United 2, Queen's Park Rangers 1. Well, when you're defending your 18-yard box, it's going to be tough. But Manchester United have struggled to break them down in general play. Two set pieces. Queen's Park Rangers 
I'd expect them to be very disciplined at them. Two set pieces, both in a row, and they'll be caught twice and two headers. And that'll be very, very disappointing to, to Mark Bone and Eddie Dombetsky down there because defensively, so far, they have been pretty good. It's a very, very good header from Darren Fletcher, and I have to say, I'm pleased for him. He's had a terrible time, he's had a, a really nasty illness, and he's come back and scored what could be a really important goal for Manchester United. Five Live Sports Extra and BBC World Service, live from Old Trafford. This game will continue on Five Live with John Murray and Kevin Gallagher. And Manchester United have come back from a goal down to the bottom club QPR to make it 2-1. And it is Darren Fletcher who has scored. This goal, like United's first, also coming from a Rooney corner on the left-hand side. And Fletcher just marauded his way in there and headed the yeah, ball down really. and into the back of the Rangers' net. It's his first goal, Darren Fletcher, since returning from the illness that kept him out for all of last season. And goodness me, I think he really, really enjoyed that. I think that goal has meant a great deal to Darren Fletcher. And for Manchester United, it means they are 2-1 up now on Queen's Park Rangers. So Manchester United 2, QPR 1. This is 5 Live, and for the rest of the 3 o'clock kickoffs, we'll be based here at Old Trafford with the commentary on the remainder of this game, but also keeping you right across everything that's happened uh, in the football in these three o'clock games. But there was a real feeling here that we might have a scare. Queen's Park Rangers led in this game for 12 minutes, but Manchester United have responded after Sir Alex Ferguson made the double substitution. Both of the goals, as I say, coming from Rooney Corners, and it is Manchester United in possession in the middle of the QPR half playing towards the old Stratford end to our left with the rain pouring down and when I say our I'm referring to the fact that Kevin Gallagher is with me former Premier League striker former Scotland international well Kevin I haven't spoken to you because you've been with John Akers on Five Live Sports Extra but we, we, we thought we had a little bit of a surprise on our hands didn't we but you can answer that in a moment because we're going to go to Stuart Hall at Wigan first Stuart well Wigan have done Manchester United brought on a couple of subs, they transformed the game, they're playing with fire, absolutely, and they're saying, to hell with <laughs> cultured football, we're going route one like Reading, and that's what happened. I've told you, they've come back from one down, Gomez has now got his second goal, he got his first 58 minutes, this one came 68, direct play, Beauchesneau says, why, to the heart of the defence, ready defence, goes my cross, and there was Gomez. Second goal, and the t first two goals of the season for him. Turn around here, Wigan 2, ready one John thank you Stuart the other scores in the Premier League as they currently stand Everton still 1-0 up on Norwich it's Stoke 1 Fulham 0 at the Britannia Stadium and earlier in our first commentary of the match of the weekend it finished Sunderland 2 West Brom 4 more on that a little bit later and I'll run you through the other latest scores in uh, a little while as well but Kevin Gallagher Manchester United now 2-1 up having been 1-0 down yeah I'll tell you what John it's, it's been one of those games because Queen's Park Rangers if they could only take their chances they could have had two or three goals you know they've had a disallowed goal but they're defending so deep now here they come again and it's through to Hernandez and he makes it 3-1 Raphael played it in and Hernandez was there one of the substitutes that Sir Alex Ferguson brought onto the field. He tucks it away, right foot from 12 yards. And Manchester United now, having been given a big scare by Queen PR. Look as though they're on the way to the win and on the way back to the top of the table. And I must admit, John, it's an inspired double substitution from Sir Alex that's actually caused the stir because he threw on two players. He took off Ashley Young and Paul Scholes thrown on Anderson and Hernandez and it changed the game for Manchester United it was like a signal to the players you need to attack, you need to get back in this game but Queen's Park Rangers just, I don't think at this moment thing can believe what's actually hit them I make that three Manchester United goals in eight minutes and they're now 3-1 up in this game and suddenly QPR having had the sniff of possibly their first Premier League win of the season now suddenly look a little dispirited and Mark Bowen's making another change now with Adel Karab coming off the field and he's going to be replaced by Junior Hoylett. While that happens, let's head to Aberdeen for the news on Scotland and Tonga. 
Andy Gillis. Second try for the Tongans. Viney Colors run fully half the length of the peel to touch down, but the Tongans missed the pit kick from in front of the post, so it's 18-15 to Tonga at the moment, and Tom Heathcote, the Bath standoff, has come on for his Scotland debut. Thanks, Andy. Just to wrap it up in the, uh, the final scores in the two internationals earlier, uh, in our commentary game, England beaten 16-15 at Twickenham. The highlights of that, by the way, on BBC Three tonight at 7pm, if you haven't been able to see it this afternoon. Uh, and Ireland, 46-24 winners against Argentina. We will have reaction to those two games as well uh, a little later on. And commentary here on Five Live from 5.15 on Wales against the All Blacks. That is here on Five Live from 5.15. But uh, this is the Barclays Premier League. Manchester United leading QPR by three goals to one, having been a goal down. Another goal at Elland Road in the Championship, Russell Fuller. And Crystal Palace are heading for their first defeat since August. Leeds United, managed by their former manager, Neil Warnock, now lead by two goals to nil. Paul Green, sweet but slightly deflected volley on 75 minutes, giving Leeds some breathing space, John. Cardiff are two nil up at Barnsley, so Cardiff, it seems, will be heading back to the top of the Championship. Yeovil 1, Carlisle 3, and Accrington Stanley 1, Gillingham 1, Gillingham, the League 2 leaders. Manchester United 3-1 up here, and now the Stretford end and all other parts of, of Old Trafford in good voice. And the ball is played to Welbeck on the right-hand side, and Welbeck on his left foot shoots, it rattles around the QPR box, and then is scraped away by Rangers to comparative safety on the left. Let's just get an update from the other two games uh, currently underway in the Premier League to... Goodison Park first, and Ian Dennis. Everton are still leading Norwich City by a goal to nil. Naismith's goal after 12 minutes, but this game is far from secure. Norwich have had a series of chances in the second half. Pilkington's direct free kick beaten out by Howard. Howard did just enough to put off Holt, and Heitinger made a goal-saving clearance from Snodgrass. But just moments ago, Baines, with a super run past four defenders, saw a left foot saved by Ruddy. 1-0 to Everton. Also, Berry now 2-1 up on Bournemouth, and it is Aldershot 1. Port Vale 3 we'll, uh, we'll go to the Britannia Stadium in a moment but Manchester United on the attack Rooney bringing the ball in from the left chips it across the penalty area but Welbeck not able to chest it down and it's down into the fullback position where Welbeck has it on his right foot still Welbeck uh, tried to pick out Darren Fletcher but it was intercepted by a, a sliding Gibral Cissé and now he has fallen for the blue and white hoops of Queen's Park Rangers Harry Redknapp, I can just see the top of his head as I look to my left. As I say, it's about 15 yards to my left, sitting directly to the left of, of Philip Beard, the QPR chief executive who spoke to us earlier this afternoon, as did Harry Redknapp himself, of course. And when he spoke to Mark Pugac right at the start of Five Live Sport today, if you didn't hear it, he said that he would be leaving everything completely to Mark Bowen and Eddie Needs Vicky this afternoon. But I can't help but think, Kevin Gallagher, that he... You know, he will have had a little word, surely, in the dressing room. I'm sure he would have done, there's no doubt about it, because as soon as he knew everything was going to be hunky-dory late last night, it would have been a chance for him just actually to go in, to day into the dressing room, show face, and try and spur the players on a little bit. South End now 3-1 up on Rochdale. It's Oxford 1, Northampton 1, equaliser for Northampton. And Morecambe 3-1 up on Wimbledon. Right, as I said... We need to get an update on Stoke against Fulham from the Britannia Stadium, and Ian Brown is there. It's still Stoke 1, Fulham 0. It's definitely a scrap. It's being bossed in the main, though, by Stoke. Charlie Adam got the goal in the first half since when Shawcross has hit the bar. Another header from Huff was tipped over in fantastic fashion by Mark Schwarzer, and Glenn Whelan should have scored, really, when he fired over the bar. Fulham have been lacking finesse today, to say the least. They've brought on Damien Duff to try and stir things up in the final 12 minutes. But it's Stoke 1, Fulham 0. QPR not finished yet. Dyer into the penalty area on the left, but his attempted cross ball was cut out by Evra, who's able to clear it for Manchester United. We're going to go to Hibbs in a moment, but QPR still pressing with Hoylett, the newly arrived Hoylett into Cissé, who tried to give him a 1-2. It didn't work, and Manchester United now look to, to counter-attack. But... Uh, in comes the challenge from Clint Hill. It's a foul and a free kick on Hernandez. So here is Ian Turner at Hibs Aberdeen. 
We have just 10 minutes left, John, and Aberdeen are in front. They lead Hibs by 1-0. It was Niall McGinn, his eighth goal of the season. A good move down the left. Hibs, a couple of players swiped at the cross. They failed to clear it. McGinn was there, controlled it, tucked it into the corner. Hibs nil, Aberdeen 1. We thought we might have a shock here at Old Trafford, but it is still at Celtic Park. Celtic nil, Inverness Caledonian Thistle 1. The other latest scores in the Scottish Premier League, Kilmarnock nil, St Johnston 1, Ross County 1, Dundee United 2, and in the game between the bottom two, St Mirren 2-1 up on Dundee. It finished Motherwell nil, Hearts nil in the lunchtime game. Next to the Championship, Peter Slater has news of a goal at Hillsborough. Second goal for Leicester City, John, 14 minutes from time. Ben Marshall scored it, powerful shot edge of the penalty area, whistled past Chris Kirkland. Marshall, remember, spent half a season on loan here at Hillsborough last year, and he didn't celebrate in respect to the Sheffield Wednesday supporters. 25,000 here, most of them Wednesdayites, very disappointed. It's Sheffield Wednesday nil, Leicester City 2. Oh, as Van Persie strikes a shot into the side netting, the angle was very, very tight there. And Van Persie was on his right foot too, and he skewed it wide. Now straight to Stuart Hall, another goal, Stuart, with you. Absolutely, went to Reading, but it's uh, the most bizarre, fast little goal you'll see, I guarantee. And because on 78 minutes, uh, there was Roberts on his old stomping ground here. He shot for goal, the ball ricocheted in the air, went about 30 feet in the air, wriggling like a vile serpent. Al Habsy went to clutch it, missed it, clutched again, spun round, fumbled it into his own net. You can't believe it. There's consternation here. Wigan 2, Reading 2, John. Thank you, Stuart. I mentioned that Cardiff were 2-0 up at Barnsley last we heard, but Stuart Pike... Yes, a goal for Barnsley John, scored by Jacob Mellis from a, a tight angle at the far post. As it stands, Cardiff, who've dominated this game, are going back to the top of the championship uh, with those two goals uh, from Newton and from uh, Gunnison. But Barnsley giving it a real go, despite the fact they haven't won uh, in seven games. Barnsley won, Cardiff two. Jackie Oatley has news of a goal in our featured game in League One. I do, and it is for the leaders, Tranmere, away at Stevenage. A really well-worked goal with McGurk down the right. Fantastic play from him. Picked out Jake Cassidy in the centre and he powered home a header for his 11th of the season, but he's first in five. Stevenage nil, Tranmere one. Thank you, Jackie. Bottom of the league, Barnet have gone a goal behind at Cheltenham in League Two. Cheltenham one, Barnet nil. It's MK Dons five, Colchester one now, and Oxford back in front against Northampton. It is 2 1 to Oxford United. Uh, back to Andy Gillis at Pitodri. Best of five minutes to play. It's nice Scotland 15, Tonga 21. Another penalty score by their fly half Africa Toa straight between the posts. And Scotland really now need a converted try if they're going to rescue this. Scotland 15, Tonga 21. Thanks, Andy. Uh, we will hear, I'm sure, from Stuart Lancaster either before five or or after five o'clock. Just a mini sports report today on Five Live because of the commentary that will begin at 5.15 from Cardiff, Wales against the All Blacks. And after the rugby. Uh, straight after the rugby from Cardiff, 6.06 with Mark Chapman and Robbie Savage tonight. That'll be round about 7.10, 7.15, something like that. Uh, and incidentally, now on Five Live Sports Extra, you can hear the qualifying session for tomorrow's Brazilian Grand Prix, the final Grand Prix of the season. And the closing stages of that are going to be here on Five Live as well, just before 5 o'clock. I don't know how we're going to fit it all in, but we will. Here is... Uh, Mbia crossing for QPR but the offside flag is up against Mackie in the middle and I think Manchester United look like a, a winning team now Kevin well certainly one that's uh, totally different from the first half you know it's a team that is short of ideas when you're playing against two banks of four and can't get through the gaps but they certainly the second half uh, Sir Alex has made a fantastic double substitution John and I must admit Manchester United have reacted from it and they've got three well deserved goals but I must admit, from set plays, not from open play. Yeah. Mackey giving QPR the lead, but those three goals for United. And there might be another one now because Hernandez plays it across and it's intercepted in the middle by a falling Anton Ferdinand to send it behind with Van Persie lurking at the back post. The three United goals, Johnny Evans with the first, heading in from close range. Fletcher with the second, with a header. Those both coming from Rooney Corners and Hernandez tooking the third away. So 3-1 it is. And another... Manchester United corner now after that interception by Hernandez we're in the last 10 minutes here five live in the world service the corner comes across and it's headed away at the near post by Cissé who gets a second chance to run it away to safety which he does let me just run you through the other latest scores in the end power championship 
Uh, Blackburn nil, Inform Millwall one at Ewood Park. Blackpool one, Watford two. Brighton are winning 1 0 against Bolton. Charlton are 1 0 up on 10 man Huddersfield. Hull City nil, Burnley one. And Ipswich one, Peterborough one. In the other games, our featured matches leads 2 0 up on the, the leaders this morning, Crystal Palace. Cardiff winning 2 1 away at Barnsley. And still Middlesbrough one, Bristol City two which is uh, something of a surprise. And there's been another goal at Elland Road, Russell Fuller. And there is hope for the leaders, Crystal Palace. Peter Ramage with a close-range header, four minutes from time after Kagesho Dikachoy's cross. Ian Holloway trying to keep his 100% record alive. He'd settle for a point right now. Leads to Crystal Palace one. And uh, if supporters of the uh, Championship, so the four clubs are wondering, on page two... Sheffield Wednesday nil, Leicester two and Wolves one, Nottingham Forest two are the other two latest scores in the championship. Right, I mentioned the fact that we could have had a big surprise here. Rudy Forsyth, you still have the prospect of that at Celtic Park. Yes, indeed, Celtic have chucked on Lassad and Paddy McCourt and they are battering at the Cali Thistle door, but so far Terry Butcher has kept it barricaded and that is why, uh, with only eight minutes to go, Celtic are trailing by a goal to nil. That goal scored by Billy Mackay exactly midway through the half and certainly it would be another example of the curse that struck Celtic every time they have played in the Champions League. They've found it very difficult on the following Saturday. So it's proved again, Celtic nil, Cali Thistle one. But, Kevin, it's the thing that's close to your heart. It... it making it look like actually you know quite a competitive season in the Premier League in Scotland oh it certainly is there's no doubt about it that's you, you just wonder how much uh, Celtic turn off because there's no old firm matches which is normally the big four matches that probably in general decides the SPL season yeah but it's certainly making it uh, well it's variety isn't it certainly um, Kilmarnock have equalised against St Johnston Michael Nelson with that goal it's 1-1 Manchester United 3-1 up on QPR here and we've got uh, six minutes of the 90 to play QPR certainly aren't giving up on it with Harry Redknapp watching just to our left as uh, the ball is played through by Granero who's just come on as a substitute for Farling through the inside right position for Mbia who was challenged and Johnny Evans has slid down there with Mbia and clattered into those advertising hoardings those of you familiar with Old Trafford will know that the pitch really falls away down towards the hoardings and if you hit that slope at the wrong place it can send you really skidding into them on this wet afternoon as well and Evans actually went into it shoulder first but just managed to get his hands up to cushion himself so I think he's going to be okay so the last thing he wanted as well was <laughs> a short uh, goal kick from Lindegaard straight back yeah thanks, like. thanks for that <laughs> matey St Mirren now 3-1 up on Dundee Dougie Imrie with the third goal for St Mirren so Manchester United 3 QPR 1 now so United will be going back above Manchester City for the time being as Evra plays it across but too far ahead of Van Persie and that's picked up by Julio Cesar yeah picked up uh, uh, ahead of Manchester City until tomorrow when uh, Manchester City go to Stamford Bridge and we'll have coverage of all tomorrow's games, of course, here on Five Live Sport, which begins at midday. But the centrepiece is commentary on Rafa Benitez's Chelsea against Manchester City. I don't think any of us are quite used to using that phrase for Chelsea just yet. I think it was uh, Henry Winter or so either yesterday or today suggesting that Rafa Benitez's Chelsea was a little bit like Mick Jagger's Beatles. <laughs> Here's Granero in the centre field for QPR. Granero gives it to Kieran Dyer. Kieran Dyer, one of the changes that was made by Mark Bowen and Eddie Needs Vicky. Dyer starting in the Premier League for the first game since the first match of last season. And QPR with Mackey, edge of the area, up against Evans. Mackey goes for goal and it ricochets off the shins of Evans and behind for a QPR corner. Before it's taken, we will get an update from Juliet Farrington at Middlesbrough. And it gets worse for Middlesbrough. 3 1 now, Bristol City lead. They did have the worst record away in the Championship, but it's Stephen Davis getting a late strike, a delightful curling shot straight into the top corner. Middlesbrough 1, Bristol City 3. Here's the corner. Granero to the near post, and it's headed firmly and powerfully away and out of play by Van Persie. So come in again, Andy Gillis in Aberdeen. Well, it's very nearly the red zone, very nearly 80 minutes. It's still Scotland 15, Tonga 21. The Scots are camped on the Tongan line. The Tongans are down to 14 men. They've been down to 14 men for the last 10 minutes. 
actually for 13 for a minute when they had two players off with the yellow card. But still the Tongans have the six-point advantage. 21-15, we're in the final minute. There's just been another goal at Everton, Ian Dennis. In the 90th minute, Norwich City have equalised. They said before that this game was far from secure. It was a long free kick swung in by Garrido right to the far post. And Besong, with the header at the far post, down off the crossbar, may well have crossed the line before Grant Holt had the finishing touch as well. In fact, I've just seen it again, and it had crossed the line. So it's Besong with the equaliser, and Norwich have levelled. And Millwall have gone 2-0 up at Blackburn, Millwall, 10 matches unbeaten, James Henry has got their second corner to QPR, and it is rattling around inside the box, Hill with a header and little Raphael there next to the post, threw himself to his right and headed it round for a corner well that's why you have a man on the post, and he's at the back post as well Raphael, and it comes at pace you know the header actually hits the grass it skids through, goalkeeper beaten but Raphael stands his ground, manages to divert it away, but that's another chance from Queen's Park Rangers, are not finished yet. Yeah, an absolute object lesson, Kevin Gallagher, as to why you need to have a man on the post. Here's the next corner, um, and Bia threw himself at it, cleared away though, headed away, and Manchester United clear towards the halfway line. Rooney goes with a, a crossfield ball to Van Persie that doesn't find its target, intercepted by Sean Derry. It's now Berry 2, Bournemouth 2, equaliser for, for Bournemouth, going so well since Eddie Howe returned. Huddersfield, 10-man Huddersfield have equalised at the Valley against Charlton, a penalty from Adam Clayton. Kilmarnock 1, St Johnston 2, Rowan Vine with that goal. And now Anderson for Manchester United. He's inside his own half, just playing across to his fellow Brazilian, Rafael. The uh, half-past five kick-off today is at Villa Park, Aston Villa against Arsenal, another tough game for Aston Villa on tape, a little run that they've been on. Pat Murphy is there for us on Five Live with the team news. Darren Bent still doesn't make the squad, even though we understand he's fit and available. Villa one change, El Mahadi in for Ireland, who's one of the subs. As for Arsenal, Jenkinson and Gibbs coming at wing-back for Sanya and Vermeilen, who are subs. Wilches is on the bench also, Walker and Santos out injured. Uh, thank you, Pat. News of that from Pat during the course of the Wales-New Zealand commentary. Here is Rooney, who loses the ball on the edge of the area. Just been pointed out to me that um, at, Nor at the game involving Northampton, Oxford winning 2-1 against Northampton, Clark Carlisle has been sent off for foul and abusive language. So that's the PFA chairman, isn't it? <laughs> sent off for foul and abusive language. I noticed that Gordon Taylor is here with us at... Uh, at Old Trafford this afternoon, I'm sure he'll have a wry smile when he hears about that, at least in public, at least in private, anyway. Um, to Aberdeen again, Andy Gillis, it's over. I know you've got surprises elsewhere, John, but here's one. Scotland 15, Tonga 21. Tonga's first victory against Scotland, and they won it deservedly with two tries on the day. Just penalty kicks for Scotland, 21-15, Tonga win. Well, what about that? You can keep quiet. Kevin Gallagher, I notice, lips sealed. I'm not saying nothing. So Scotland have lost to Tonga. Ireland have tonked Argentina, 46-24. And England losing 16-15 to South Africa at Twickenham. Uh, Blackpool have come from 2-0 down to make it 2-2 against Watford. Isaiah Osborne with the second for Blackpool. We won't be hearing from Harry Redknapp in our mini sports report because it's just been pointed out to me that he has left. He's left his seat at Old Trafford. But I can tell you that he will be speaking to Gary Richardson on Sports Week in the morning on Five Live after weekend breakfast from, uh, from half past eight. Stuart Lancaster, who I'm sure we will hear from uh, during Five Live Sport today. Stuart Lancaster will be on with Gary in the morning as well as Clive Woodward and Lewis Moody and indeed Jeff Miller as well on whatever happens in the cricket overnight. Another goal at Wigan, Stuart Hall. Good by this, John, it's now Wigan 3, Reading 2. Uh, Wigan, down and out, El Habs is howler, gifting that second goal to Reading. But, now then, Coney burst through, lovely through ball, he saw Gomez rushing on, he gave the ball to Gomez, who thrashed it in, and would you believe, it's a Gomez hat-trick, and the guy hasn't scored a goal until now. It's Wigan 3, Reading 2. And Dagenham and Redbridge 1-0 up on Fleetwood, and uh, that is some comeback for Wigan. Ball forward towards Van Persie. Manchester United looking for a fourth. It's laid into Hernandez. Hernandez tried to flick it back into the path of Rafael. It was most elaborate from Manchester United. If it had worked, it would have been wonderful. 
Another late goal in the Stevenage Tranmere game, Jackie Oatley. And it's a very, very late equaliser for Stevenage against the leaders, Tranmere. It's Greg Tansey from 25 yards out, a frantic finish as Tranmere looked to try and retake the lead, but it's cleared away by Stevenage. It's Stevenage 1, Tranmere 1 after three minutes of added time. In stoppage time, it remains Celtic nil, Inverness 1. It's finished between Hibbs and Aberdeen and Turner. Hibs nil, Aberdeen won and Aberdeen have denied Hibs the chance to go to the top of the SPL with a goal 14 minutes from time from top scorer Niall McGinn. Lee Griffiths came close on five occasions for Hibs in the second half, but then McGinn struck. Hibs nil, Aberdeen won. And it is finished between Wigan and Reading, Stuart Hall. Finished 3-2, a hat-trick for Jordi Gomez, and the guy hasn't scored until today. <laughs> Wigan, one down at half-time, came back. Then Al Habsi fumbled the ball to get rid of the equaliser, and the winning goal scored by Gomez. Gomez hat-trick, wonderful day, great atmosphere. Wigan 3, Reading 2. Full-time at Stoke, Ian Brown. Yes, Stoke are happy. Stoke won Fulham nil, a functional victory for the home team against Fulham, who were flimsy on the road again. The only goal of the game was the highlight, scored by Charlie Adam, turning and twisting inside the six-yard box to convert from the knockdown from Peter Crouch. Shawcross hit the bar for Stoke, and Ken Wynne jones had one disallowed late on. Stoke have beaten Fulham 1-0. Manchester United on the breakaway here. Anderson played it to Van Persie, who cut back onto his right foot, and the shot was deflected over the top of the bar. We're still playing it Old Trafford, Manchester United 3-1 up on QPR. Portsmouth have equalised late on against Coventry. It's 1-1 at the Rico Arena. So corner to United from the right. We'll get the full-time score from Ellen Drode first from Russell Fuller. Leeds 2, Crystal Palace 1. Leeds surviving a very anxious six minutes of added time. They have their first win in eight games in front of their new owners. Becky Owen Green for Leeds. Late goal for Ramage for Palace. But Leeds beat the championship leaders by two goals to one. Rooney's corner is headed away by QPR. And I think we're done here at Old Trafford. We are. We are. After QPR led in this game through Jamie Mackey's goal in the 52nd minute. QPR led for 12 minutes, but then Manchester United, Kevin Gallagher, hit them with a three-goal burst from Evans, Fletcher and Hernandez, and United, top of the league. Yeah, and I must admit, after the first-half performance that they had, you know, they, they, they couldn't quite break Queen's Park Rangers down, but again, Sir Alex made that double substitution, and then it all changed for Manchester United, got a couple of set plays, and they were on their way, they were back in the game, and all of a sudden, Queen's Park Rangers went on a defensive, they were defending too deep, and just invite Manchester United on to you. And at times you can't do that, and they paid a heavy price for it. So on five live, commentary from Brazil and Cardiff coming up in the next half hour. But at Old Trafford, it is finished. Manchester United 3, QPR 1. Let's go straight to Goodison Park. Full time from Ian Dennis.